Welcome to the stream, everyone. How's it going? Thank you for choosing to learn Korean on a um, no specific Sunday in general, nothing else going on today. Uh, so I'm really glad that you're joining me here today. Uh, we're going to be starting the stream right at the top of the hour from two o'clock my time. And uh, we'll probably finish the lesson right around just a random. I'll just pick, let's say, 3.30 ish maybe exactly by 3.30. I'm planning on being finished so that you can do whatever else you want to do with your day, although nothing else is happening today again. Welcome, uh, Julie Richards. Hey, Tragadundies. I never can say your name, but I'll Traga. That's why I always call you Traga. Welcome. Uh, Aniki says, uh, If there's anything with my voice, it's I, I got like a slight... Uh, in Korean, they would call it a muk. Kamgi, mukamgi, a throat cold is what they say in Korean. It's really just a cold where you're you're not like sick, but your throat is like you're sick. So yeah, I got one of those over the sometime over the weekend from somewhere. I don't know. And uh yeah, but mostly other than that though, I'm doing fine. Just uh in case you're wondering. If I start like coughing, uh it's I, I didn't I, I'm not I'm not dying, I promise. Well, very, I am very slowly dying, but I'm not going to die during the stream, so you don't have to worry if I start coughing. Kamgi koryoso, yeah, kind of, kind of. Oh, and then uh, kol kol lios So you're just missing the the uh, the liel at the bottom of the ko there for the first syllable. Traga says, "Are you going to watch the Super Bowl? What's that? I've never heard of this Super Bowl. I don't know. I I don't know what what you're talking about." But uh, yeah, anyway, I will be done though uh, within, I'd say less than two hours from right now will be finished. So plenty of time to do whatever else with your day, uh, even though there's nothing else going on for the rest of the day. Where is everyone watching from? Let's see. Someone had said they're from, that's right. Laurencia said you're from South Africa. That is pretty cool. Someone else said they're watching from Israel. Someone says they're watching from sleep. Oh, no, you're, that's just you're going to sleep. Mexico. We have a Mexican. We have Ecuador, Sweden, Netherlands, Jamaica. I'll never do that again. Sorry. Germany, Brazil, India. CA, I guess that's Canada or it could be California. I think Canada. Trega says, I thought all Americans watch Super Bowl. Well, I, I admit it, I've never watched it before. I have watched some of the commercials, though, because they're kind of fun. That's when all the best commercials come out. If there is a time to watch commercials, it would have to be that. Uh, I've never actually seen it before. I've never been invited to a, to a Super Bowl a viewing before either. But I, I guess it's fine. Am I missing anything? Uh, Belgium, Hungary, Jamaica. Is this the same Jamaica or a different Jamaica? A different Jamaica. Well, there are more than uh, at least two people in the country of Jamaica. That's interesting. I didn't know. I thought there was just one guy hanging out there. <laughs> Turkey, Boston, Boston. <laughs> Wicked. Thanks, Pally. Sudan, France, North Carolina. It's like all these exotic countries. we got Jamaica, Hungary, Turkey, Sudan. Well, there's Boston. <laughs> and then North Carolina. Yes. Poland. Nice, nice. Poland. Oklahoma, but from Montana. Poland. Never been there. I've got, I think that's where my mother's, mother's side of the family originally immigrated to the U.S. from was Poland, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was Poland. Yeah. Never been there, though. They got out of there. I want to say 19, 1920s. Yeah, 1920s. Although I'd have to ask to find out the exact date, but it was sometime around then uh, before my grandma was born. So it was a pretty good time to get out of Poland. I would, if, if there is a time to get out of Poland in the 1900s, I think that was probably one of the best times. Let's see. Oklahoma, but from Montana. That's right. Zandria, how's it, do how's it doing? <laughs> how's it going? Puerto Rico. We have someone from Puerto Rico here. I literally only know that place because I auditioned as a high school student to be in the uh, high school performance of West Side Story. I did not get the part. 
blame that dumb casting director didn't pick me. How dare he? Does he not see potential? And anyway, I remember trying to sing the, uh, uh, you know that song I can't sing but I'll, I'll get taken off of YouTube if I try to sing it because I, it would sound so like the real song I just can't do it you know what I'm talking about Czech Republic nice Toronto Canada and you ask a question um, I'm not doing questions right now but that's a good question to hold on to by the Nayo. oh thank you Traga. yeah I'm not like I said it's it's more I would just call it a mokamgi so like a throat cold whereas like I'm coughing my nose is running a bit and it's like my nose is like stuffy when I'm trying to sleep. I'll be like <laughs> like that. Um, but it's not like I feel miserable all day, sort of that. Not that quite not that kind of cold. Like I need to drink hot soup and wrap myself in a blanket. It's not that kind of cold. Fortunately, England for England, James. No, for me. Wait, why am I doing like an Australian accent? That's totally Australian. That's not English at all. Right. <laughs> I'm from England. <laughs> Throw another shrimp on the bobby, which literally I hear literally nobody in Australia would say, because first of all, they don't say shrimp. They say prawn. And the that was just from the commercial with uh, Paul Hogan, right? Yeah. Paul Hogan, the uh, Crocodile Dundee actor made up kind of, uh, or maybe that's what he says in his part of the Australia from from down under that's how he's that's what he says i guess i don't know the only uh, australian accent i can do is probably the the sniper character from team fortress 2 and that guy is also not australian so <laughs> brazil new jersey i'm sorry uh italy rome nice uk mexico hello from utah i'm sorry uh let's see julie richard says we call that crud here in north carolina all right <laughs> Hi from Alabama. Hi from Turkey. Another Turkey. Georgia. I know. I know Georgia, but this is Georgia. I, apparently, this is the the state where you just keep eating until you pass out. It sounds wonderful. I would love to visit Georgia someday. Let's see. North Pole, Alaska. <clears throat> Are you serious? Are you really watching from the North Pole? <clears throat> yeah. Like I said, I have a like a slight. It's actually not even down here, which is good. It's like up here. So it just makes me cough sometimes, but I'm I'm perfectly fine except for that. So you can just ignore it if I'm coughing. Estados Unidos. That's the United States, I believe, right? But you speak Spanish. Or you're like me and you took Spanish for one semester in junior high. Que hora es? Que hora es? Uh, Lithuania. California. Sounds exotic. Yes, it's a small town in Fairbanks. Okay, nice. Forgot to add LA, California. All right, yep. That's that's where I am right now in Los Angeles. But I won't be for long. I'm going to be going to Korea, of course, during the summer, like I always do. I'll be there from May. I'll be there until July, the end of July, at least. Maybe until early August. We'll see how the the plane tickets go. It's all. It always depends on the price of the plane tickets because the, these days, the plane ticket prices are just ridiculous. They're like at least 50% more than they were just a year ago. No, two years ago. Yeah, they went up a lot. It used to be like 1100 for a flight round trip. And now it's like minimum 18, 1900 for the cheap flights. So yeah, it, it's pretty ridiculous. So I don't know when I'm going to be going exactly, but sometime in May until sometime in July or August. I love that soap art. Yeah, me too. It's pretty, it's pretty good. It was uh, it was really sad though when um, they just like uh, when when they broke up, but at least they got together again. Although they then did break up again, but then they got together again, so it was all okay. Hi from Finland, Finland. Uri owner pame What song is that? And you snapped twice. Is this the Adams Family in Korean? Doo -doo -doo -doo. I can't do anything more. That's that's the limit of YouTube's copyright. But you all know what I'm talking about. Did anyone watch the original Adams Family show? I used to. There was because like I'm not that old, but 
so they were, it wasn't new episodes, but these were reruns. They used to show on uh, Nickelodeon would have a, a part, a time period, a time slot every day that was called Nick at Night. And they would run older shows that used to be popular on TV. So they had, um, yeah, that was one of the shows they had. I think it, I'm think I, I think it was on Nickelodeon. Yeah, they had Adam's Family, and then they also had the Munsters. They're kind of similar, like you know, kind of copycats. Although um, um, some people prefer one or the other. I don't know if anyone else watched that. Adam's Family was okay. It was watchable. Wasn't a big fan of Munsters, but I know a lot of people were. 1800 and Eka yeah, yeah, economy, economy. That yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not flying business over here. <laughs> I did I did once though for uh with I had earned up mileage points from going to Korea so many times that I got to take a free flight. This was 2 years ago. 2 years ago I got one of my flights to Korea, only to Korea was free. And uh that was great, but uh other than that I've never I've only been able to afford economy. Maybe someday, someday I'll pay and I'll get a uh I'll do an upgrade or something like that. That'll be nice. Play it cool, boy. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> I totally forgot those songs, though. I'm still mad at the drama teacher, so. Adam's Family is the best. Yeah, that was that was a pretty fun show. I also liked the original movie. It was it was kind of um kind of interesting. So Pyrex Moon says, for some reason I thought your eyes were blue, but now I see they're brown. My eyes are not brown, actually. My eyes are hazel. So that means brown with green. And I have more green in my eyes, I think, than other people, typically with hazel eyes. But you can't see it unless you get really close. So my eyes look brown from a distance, but within like a foot, uh, you can see they're actually quite greenish. It's just small, small fact. Doesn't really matter because no one ever, I don't, I don't introduce myself to people like, hey everyone. Nice to meet you. Like, I'm not, I'm not like really up in anyone's face. So most people don't know. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice, Oh, yes. Nice, nice. I totally get what you're saying. Song. Awesome. So you found someone, people that you can practice a little bit of Korean with. Glass artist. Yeah, I have a uh, uh, mok kamgi. So it's basically I have symptoms of a cold, but I'm not like I don't have a fever. I'm not like wrapped in a blanket drinking hot tea all day. You know, I I'll take a Tylenol once a day and, and that's pretty much it. And I'm good. And uh, yeah, so it's just a little bit annoying because I'm I have a little bit of a I like a voice like that. My voice is not completely there, and I'm coughing. But other than that, I'm fine. Yeah. Zandria says rattle or make noise to fight or duking it out. <laughs> um. Um. I'm trying to remember. There was a, there was an expression I knew. Hampantida. I think. Let me check. Yeah, I think it was hampantida. Uh, let me think. Uh, neighbor doesn't really have it. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is an expression. I just, I totally forgot it because I learned this. This would have been 18 years ago now. This was one of the uh, an old expression that I remember learning. Han pan is like one game or one match. And then dida or putta. I think they also say putta. Let me check. My neighbor's not very helping. Um, it's, yeah, it's basically to fight. Uh, there's a few other ways. Uh, there's another expression that uses han pan that I can't think of right now. If there's a native, I'm sure a uh, native Korean would know this. There's another expression. But anyway, yeah, like, 뜨다, 뜨다 is one, one expression. Um, 
if I think of something better though, maybe ask on Discord. I can think of it a little bit later. But yeah, there are a few ways. There are a lot of ways, actually. Not a few. There are a lot of ways. Koro um, napjakage hada is another way. Uh, it is another expression for fighting. Literally, it means to make someone's nose flat. <laughs> And then there's lots of funny expressions for fighting also, I remember. Uh, <laughs> one of the ones I learned, oh yeah. One punchy siri gangnengi was a really funny expression. Like that's where it, one punch is like in one punch. And siri three, gangnengi is like a, that's like a kernel of corn. So like three teeth knocked out in one punch was like an expression you use for like hitting someone. Like a really strong punch knocks out three teeth. Or there are a few expressions like that I remember also learning. Really useless stuff, though. It's it's only useful to like learn it and laugh at yourself, and then I've never gotten to use that one ever. Aniki says, "Do you celebrate Sornar? Yes, mm, yes, and no. So, uh, Sornar during the lunar U New Year, it's just a it's just a, a holiday, so you just don't work." Um, Koreans will eat tteokguk, so rice cake soup, which is soup. It's kind of like ramen broth, like ramen noodle broth with sliced circular pieces of rice cake that are cooked in it. And sometimes they'll also make tteok, mandu guk with mandu inside of it. So the gyoza, basically, or pot stickers, whatever you want to call them, mandu, in there as well. Um... That's good. That's a common thing people eat at Sarlar, and then they'll visit their family sometimes. But there isn't, it's not like a huge celebration. I know in China, it's a much bigger deal. But in Korea, that's pretty much it. You just, you say, Happy New Year. You can say, just like you can at the New Year in uh, the end of December, you know, early January, you can say, Happy New Year. But uh, so you can say it once more for Sarlar. But other than that, it's not really a it's not really a special event. It's not like, oh, it's sort of so everyone's gonna do uh, like this. This is this is it, pretty much. I just think Sauda wouldn't be cool enough for the Jets. Yeah, I think um I think quarter Napjakagehada would be fine. Although I don't know, I'm sure someone already made a translation for the 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 jet song. Neiman asked, asked, an interesting question. Billy, in almost 20 years of learning Korean, yeah, it's been over 18 years. This year, May, officially, will be the 19th year that I've been learning Korean. 19. That's good, because I actually personally didn't like saying 18 every single time I would say. <laughs> I've been learning for 18 years. Just not a great number in Korean. But anyway, I'm past that. So yeah, tw almost almost twenty years. Where do you still need improvement? I still study every day. <clears throat> so I uh, I pretend to be a, a Korean teacher here, but I'm I'm very much still a learner. I'm I'm someone just like you. I've just been doing it longer, and uh, yeah, I still need improvement. In let's see, I have a uh, let me show you. So one book I'm slowly going through is uh, I have a business Korean book. It's not, this is not a book made for Korean learners at all. This is just a book released by uh, Yonsei University, which is one of the top universities in Korea. Although if you're not, if you're going there as a non-Korean, it's not. But if you're going there as a Korean in their actual school, then yes. The reason I say that is they also have a language program, which is separate from the university that I, I don't know. I haven't heard too many great things about. But uh, yeah, it's just a business Korean book. Eh, actually, it is made for Korean learners. I take it back. But it's not really, it's not beginner, it's not learner friendly, I'll say. It's just for people who already speak fluent Korean and want to learn business type of speaking. So this is this is something where I would lack in would be business because they use, they use some, not that they use unique grammar so much, but they, the way that you speak is different than how you talk. Like the way you write an email is not the way that you would uh, speak. Whereas in English, we do tend to do a lot of the same type of speaking as when we write an email. Like, hey, I was just wondering if I could ask you for 30 minutes of your time later in this afternoon. Like that's how you'd speak and that's what you'd write. Korean emails tend to be different. It's not how they speak. So that that's something that, that trips me up 
is writing emails, working with that sort of speech. So that's what I'm working on. Another thing is just more idiomatic expressions. So I've gone through several idiomatic books already, and there's a new one that I'm waiting. Actually, it was a book my wife bought for my kid of Korean idiomatic expressions. And that's also good. So I'm going through there and there are a few more in there that I haven't, I didn't know. I think it has a hundred and most of them I've seen, but there are still several new ones I've never encountered before. So I'm learning those. And then just in general, getting faster at using everything. So not just being able to speak Korean at a normal speed, that's fine, but being able to do it faster and being able to do it more skillfully. So yeah, I'm, I'm still always trying to improve. Let's see. Um, someone said 18 in Korean. Yeah, 18 in Korean. Oh, and the prerequisite for this lesson is conjugating verbs, though I'm I'm assuming, hopefully accurately, I'm assuming everyone knows that. <clears throat> Again, if I cough, it's just my cold. I'm not uh I'm yeah, I'm just coughing. <laughs> uh 18 is sheep is 10. So the way they do it is 10 and then pi for 8. So ship pi. Totally normal. But the key is the key is this. Saying this whole sound. Ship pi, you're fine. <laughs> if you don't say that, you're swearing. It sounds it's not quite as bad as the uh the F word. It's not quite that level. But um so in case you're wondering, you're not like insulting everyone and they're going to, you know, go insane and not be your friend anymore. It's not that level. It's it's quite common. Although then again, so is, you know, so is certain swear, swear words in English. But it is quite bad and I would be careful. Make sure you just pronounce the word sip correctly and you're, you're going to be okay. Um, yeah. So I can say it fine, which is not a problem. The problem is a Korean asking me how long I've been studying Korean and they don't know I already speak Korean. So I start speaking Korean and they're listening. Where is this foreigner going to make a mistake? Where am I going to pick up that they're not Korean? Uh, they're still, they're speaking Korean, but I still can't believe they're speaking Korean. Maybe they just memorized this expression. And as soon as I say 18, I better say it perfect. Or, or they might think, huh? did you just swear? Ha <laughs> ha, you pronounced that wrong. So it's just, they're not used to, most Koreans aren't used to hearing non-Koreans speak their language. And even when you do speak it well, their their brain is telling them something's wrong. So uh, yeah, I just didn't like saying it, but it's it was okay for me. It just meant every time I would say it, I'd have to be really, make sure I'm doing everything perfectly. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's two o'clock. So we better get started on our lesson. Oh, real quick, real quick. In case you didn't get our announcement from last week, in case you didn't see the video, just announcing it one more time, I have a brand new book, Korean Reading Made Simple 2. It's different than the first one, so you don't need the first one to use this. It's the, These reading books are just on, they stand on their own. Uh, this one is Korean Folk Tales, and I explain like everything I can possibly think of to explain, so not just vocabulary words and grammar, but like everything about the stories. So like where vocabulary words came from. So you can actually understand if that's a word you should learn or not. Like, for example, 올려보다. 올려보다. It's not just teaching you 올려보다 means to look upward because then you'll think, when am I going to use that? Well, it tells you how it, where it comes from. It comes from 올리다, which is regular to raise or to lift something. And then 보다. So lift, raising and looking up. So that's how it gets put together. And then when you see other words like 내려보다, right? You you might be able to pick out, oh, maybe that means 내리다, like down looking. Oh, maybe. So kind of to help you learn to really understand the, the Korean. I'm, I'm looking at it, but I'm not actually showing you this. So I should probably show it to you. But uh, yeah, it just came out a few weeks ago. It is, I believe it's like, Twenty dollars in print or something like that, but in uh, in ebook form, it's also nine dollars on my website, so you can get that. And uh, yeah, brand new book. I also have another project coming out soon, but I, I can't announce that today. But uh, stay tuned for more. And now back to your scheduled programming. Okay. I think I just broke. It. I just broke it. <laughs> broke my pen. Oh, <coughs> I broke my pen. Hold on. I'm going to throw this piece away so I don't step on it. Okay. 
we're going to be learning about honorific speech. What is honorific speech? No pimmar is what you can refer to as honorific speech. Literally, no pim is from the verb no pida. It's related to nopta, to be high. Well, nopida is the causative version, means to make something high. So, raised up by words that have been elevated. Elevated speech is what it means. And this is honorific speech. So, the way it works, honorific speech, it just shows extra respect toward the person, again, a person, that someone is talking about. And the way that it does that is by elevating, figuratively, the person that you're talking about. Again, I want you to write this as a note. It is the person who someone is talking about. About. I did not say the person you're talking to. It's the person you're talking about. That could be the person you're talking to. I'm talking about you, in which case you can use it. But it doesn't have to be. It can be anyone in the world. This is whether they're in the room with you or not. You're just showing extra respect towards someone you're talking about. I respect this person I'm talking about. Now, it could be you. I could be talking to you and I respect you, so I show extra respect. But if I'm talking to you, but I'm talking about someone else, I might use a different level of politeness there. So, honorific speech can be used together with casual speech. Yes, you can have honorific speech and casual speech in the same verb. It's totally normal. You can have it with formal speech. You can also have it with plain form. Any speech level is fine to mix with honorific speech because honorific speech, again, is showing respect to the person you're talking about. Whereas casual speech, formal speech, plain form, all that is more related to who you're speaking with, who you're currently talking to. Like if I'm talking with my friend, I would just say, yeah, bo he, bo mogoso, pa using casual speech, right? But if I'm talking with my friend about my grandmother or about their grandmother, I'm not going to say, odi kasso? Where did your grandmother go? Harmony odi kasso? That sounds, it sounds rude because I'm not the grandmother's best friend. Even if I was, it sounds disrespectful. So I would say, kasso so? So I'm using casual speech with my friend, but I'm talking about the grandmother now respectfully by using honorific speech. In the same way, I could be talking with my boss and I ask my boss a question and it's a formal situation. So I use formal speech. And because I'm talking about my boss by asking them a question, I would use honorific speech with formal speech. So just kind of don't, don't think that honorific speech has to do with how you're necessarily speaking with someone else. It's about whoever you're talking about. Even if you're speaking to yourself, nobody is around, you would probably still use honorific speech, but you would use it maybe with plain form, which can be used when you're talking by yourself. For example, again, with our example of where did the grandmother go? Harmony, odi kasho, odi kasho chi? Harmony, kun, harmony yogi an geshosso. Actually, I guess that you probably do that with someone else. Yogi an geshotta? It wasn't here. Um, let's see. Yeah, it would just be anything you're, anyone you're talking with currently doesn't matter as to how you use honorific speech. That is just related to casual speech and formal speech and all of that. Okay, so note, however, it is used to show extra respect towards someone that you're talking about. This is always going to be someone. It's not going to be an animal. You're not going to ever want to use honorific speech to talk about an animal. If you have your boss's dog comes into work, you would never tell the dog, 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요 actually uses honorific speech. That would be really awkward to use honorific speech to the dog and then use honorific speech toward the boss when you're talking about the boss. It's kind of like putting them on the same level. So you wouldn't use this toward any animal. An exception would be if there was like in a story where an animal becomes a human and, you know, it's only used for showing extra respect to people. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. The other thing is you're not going to use honorific speech toward children. 
I'm sorry if you are a child, you do not get extra honorific speech used about you. You wouldn't say, oh, that person's son, who's six years old, ah, 정말 예쁘세요. 귀여우세요. Like, you don't show honorific respect. You don't use honorific speech when talking about kids, especially not younger kids. And you also wouldn't usually use honorific speech for talking about an object. So you wouldn't say, wow, this board is so white. This pen is so... It flew away. Ah, 이 pen 정말, 정말 멋지셔. 정말 멋지세요. You would never use honorific speech about, like, a thing. Again, I'm putting a quote around this because there are situations when you do, but not regular objects. So, only for people. And I should say only for people who are, like, at least, at least older than a teenager. Yeah, below that, you wouldn't use honorific speech. Okay. I have a, a couple more things to say, and then we're going to start doing some examples. And I'm going to have you do some examples as well. I just want to make sure I introduce this stuff clearly before we go into it. Hold on, let me see. Uh, oh, Eminem Twix, welcome. This is going to take a really quick break and check check some comments. Xandria said, speaking of gangster movies, is it still realistic to expect honorifics? Yes, you would see honorifics used by gangsters because you don't want to be rude. Like, you don't want to be rude it, to someone else. Like, it's not about who you're speaking to. Again, it's who you're speaking about. I could be like yelling at some guy. I mean, I, you know, I don't, I don't yell very much. I think I've only yelled probably a handful of times in my entire life. It could be yelling at someone. And I say something about them. I just use casual speech. But if I say something about someone I would show respect toward, you bet I'm going to add honorifics. Like, oh, how dare you say that to this person? This person is, and I'd use honorifics. Even if I'm using casual speech, swearing, yelling, everything to this person, when I talk about this person in casual speech, I would add honorifics to whatever I'm saying that they're doing or whatever I'm describing about them. That's how it works. Okay, so when you use honorific speech, what it does is it acknowledges that you respect the speaker, respects the person who you're talking about. This is the easiest way to understand when and where you should use it. If you're talking about someone else, anyone, and you respect that person, I'm not saying like, this isn't some hard to grasp Korean concept. Do you respect that person or not? Like, do you want to show respect? You acknowledge that you respect them, then use honorific speech. Obviously, you're not going to respect your closest friends. If you're really close and you're the same age, you're not going to be like, yeah, I totally respect this, bro. I mean, you know, realistically, do you have high respect for someone who's the same age as you, who you, you know, they fell asleep on your couch and you go over each other's houses and hang out? Like, that's not the kind of person that you would show extra respect for. But like your teachers, your mentors, someone, at a coworker whether they're your same, the same age as you or not, you know, you respect them, right? Anyone you feel respect toward by using honorific speech, you're just acknowledging that you feel respect toward the person. So it's used a lot. It's not like you only use this to your boss and you only use this to your teacher. You use this to regular people, regular acquaintances. You're not going to use this to your close friends because you wouldn't use that speech with them anyway. You would just use only casual speech. But you would use this for people who you're not very close with. Even if you do know them, you still would probably want to use honorific speech. And honorific speech has the feeling of, I want to express that I either respect or look up to the person that I'm talking about. So if you want to talk about uh, Korean teachers on YouTube, you would want to use honorific speech about them. It doesn't matter if they seem like they're younger than you, because you want to express that you look up to them. Now, I don't mind when people don't use the correct amount of respect to me or the correct politeness level to me because I'm a teacher and I've done the same thing a lot, especially when I was a beginner. Uh, not so much now, but uh, when I was a beginner, I didn't know how these worked. So I don't care personally. I appreciate it though, but Koreans will feel that. Koreans will feel like, wait, oh, they didn't use the right politeness level to me. Oh, it's okay, they're, they're a learner. But they kind of wish that you did at the same time. So yeah, anyone that you feel like you want, anyone you want to express, I look up to this person, 
use honorific speech when you're talking about them. Um, so this includes anyone who's socially higher than you are. I hope you're taking notes, but if you don't, you can also download this outline from my Patreon page. As soon as the live stream's over, I'll have it up. So you'll use it for anyone who is socially higher than you. This will be teachers, your boss, um, maybe your coworkers. Maybe they've been at the company longer or you're just not close with them. Leaders, anyone of a higher rank than you, if you're in a position that has ranks, anyone who's a higher rank than you, definitely use honorifics when you're talking about them. Strangers are the next thing you're going to want to use this toward. Um, strangers, because you don't know if you should be respectful of them or not. You don't know if this stranger you're meeting is secretly, you know, this important person. It doesn't really matter. They're just someone you don't know. You can't assume that you can be casual with them. You want to use honorifics with them. Uh, there are some exceptions to that. And I can, I actually made a whole course about exceptions and stuff, but in general, any stranger, you need to be polite. You need to use honorifics. Also, in fact, it could be rude if you asked a question to a stranger and you didn't use honorific speech. So let me give you an example. If you're asking a stranger a question like, hey, excuse me, do you know where is the bathroom? 화장실 어디 있는지 혹시 화장실이 어디 있는지 알아요? 알아요? This would be kind of kind of rude, actually. Not flat out rude because they'll see you're not a native Korean speaker, but a little bit rude. But why? It has the you at the end. It should be polite. Well, it's not honorific. You're talking about the stranger. You're asking them, do they know? Do you know? I'm talking about you right now. Not just to you, but about you. Arayo would actually be a bit rude. Exact same meaning, but now you're using honorifics. Aseo? Now you're, ooh, you're spot on. You sound great. But yeah, arayo would actually sound a bit rude when you're using it to ask questions to someone else. So when you're talking about someone else and they're a stranger, you really want to use honorifics because it can come across as rude. Now, if you're talking about yourself, tonen arayo, that's fine because you wouldn't use honorifics there anyway. Tonen arayo, I know. Perfect to a stranger. Arayo, no, rude. So you really need to use honorifics. They're not something that only fluent Korean speakers should be doing. This is kind of a, a basic level of politeness you want to show to other people. Next. Okay. Um, so anyway, other people you want to use politeness, sorry, other people you want to use honorific speech to would be grandparents, other people's parents, other people's grandparents, and optionally, optionally your own parents. So the way you speak with your own parents, if they're Korean, will depend on your relationship. So I can't say that you have to use this when talking about your parents. A lot of people just don't respect their parents. They just don't think of them as a higher level. They kind of think of them as like, well, when I was a kid, sure, but now, you know, we're on the same level or I have kids too, or you're not my dad, you know, this sort of behavior. Um, a lot of kids these days, I'd say most people these days don't speak very politely to their parents, but that depends on the relationship. My wife does still speak politely to her mother, but um, yeah, most people, you won't hear it like that. <clears throat> so, okay. And then again, any acquaintance. So anyone you know, but you're not close with. When you speak with them, if they're not really young, you want to use honorifics when talking about them. Okay, so that's all of the situations when you would use honorific speech. I hope I hope you're doing okay. We, we did cover a lot. I'm going to take uh, 30 seconds for questions. And uh, then I'll go on to, we're going to give some examples and I'm going to have you make some sentences. You're not the boss of me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, Shagofta says, I think this was a reason my mom told me not to talk to strangers. Okay. Steven asks a question. Do you need to use both honorifics and humble speech in the same conversation? Or can you just use one without using the other? You would you, you could use them together because they do different things. And uh, if we if you vote on it, if you want, I'm, I can do another lesson about uh, humble speech. But humble speech is much simpler than honorific speech because it's literally two verbs. Oh, and a noun. But the noun you already know. 
Tall for me is humble speech or toy for us instead of uri. That's literally, that's, that's humble speech. Now you master humble speech after you learn that and then two verbs. So it's, it's not a big deal. <clears throat> honorific speech has several things you have to learn, but humble speech and honorific speech are both used together. They both accomplish the same goal. Moni says, question, if you get close to an older person, do you stop speaking with honorifics? Okay, that's a great question. Uh, let me state, let's think about this. Let's think about this together. So you want to use honorifics to people who are socially higher than you. So are they socially higher than you? <clears throat> if you're, if you get to know them and you're close, well, who are they? That's the question. Who is this stranger that you get close with? Are they just really a random stranger, like a store owner? Or is it a stranger as in like it's a teacher and now you know them and you're closer, but they're still your teacher, in which case they're still socially higher than you and you would still use honorifics toward them. It, it would depend on the stranger. If you give me a situation, I can tell you, but there could be situations, yes, where you would start speaking more casually, not casually because they're still older than you. They're still going to be socially higher than you in age. But if you're really close with them, then you could get away with not using honorific speech. Definitely. Casual speech, though, that would probably not happen in Korea. Um, although as a non-Korean, it could. I have this again, this could be this could get into this could get really complicated if you think about all of this. But it all boils down to a feeling. All of the speech levels. In fact, I did a whole course, Master Politeness Levels in Korean. It's like 24 episodes. It goes into like literally everything about politeness levels, all the politeness levels, how they all work, how they don't work, and like all the exceptions and like, well, what if this person talks with this person, but this person's this person's boss and this person marries this person. All that stuff is covered because it's it's really, it all boils down to just a feeling. And honorific speech has the feeling of, I wanna express that I respect or look up to this person. The end. If you understand that, you will always use honorific speech correctly. I want to express that I look up to or respect this person that I'm talking about. That's the, that's it. That's all it is. Everything about using honorific speech boils down to that in the end. So each level of speech has a different feeling. For example, the yo form would have a few, anyway, I'm not going to go into this, but there's a whole course for, I, I explain all the feelings and then we talk about all of them. The Koreans are not thinking about the rules when they use honorific speech. They're not thinking, oh, well, this person's my boss's cousin's nephews twice removed. Like all they're not thinking about this. So therefore I should use honor. They don't do this. They just feel like, oh, I feel like I should be respectful. I feel like I should uh, show that I express that I look up to or respect this person. I'm going to use honorific speech. That's it. It's just a feeling. They're not thinking about rules and exceptions in their head. So, uh, yeah. Which if you, when you understand that, it'll, it'll be a lot easier to use this stuff. This is not rock. It's not rocket science. in the fact that I mean, you don't need to learn all the exceptions to use it perfectly. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Aniki says it can also depend on the circumstances. I've seen couples that speak casually at home, but respectfully in a formal setting. Yes. Because even if someone gives you permission to speak casually with them, that does not mean you can go out and speak casually with them in public, which is another Thing because casual again because casual speech shows I consider myself to be on the same level as this person and that's fine if you have a relationship with someone and you're like hey you know we're dating or we're best friends even though you're a year older than me we're gonna just speak casually that's easier for me cool when you go out in public though and you're with other people that know those people you don't want to express I consider myself on the same level as this person because other people will think you're being disrespectful they're like wait that person's older. Why is he being disrespectful toward you? And it'll feel like, wait, why is this person not speaking more politely? Why is this person speaking kind of rude to this other person? And they won't get it. So they'll default to actually using normal speech as soon as they're being watched. And the same happens on camera. If you ever watched TV shows or like uh, online shows with your favorite music celebrities, I know like these days, every band has their own like TV show. Uh, they'll have their own web show or whatever. Sometimes they'll sometimes they'll slip and they'll use casual speech to each other, even though they're like very separate ages and they don't have like a family environment, but they actually are separate ages and they'll slip and use casual speech. That's because that's how they <clears throat> that's because that's how they normally would speak to each other off camera. But as soon as the cameras go on, they need to do that 
properly because it looks like they're being disrespectful otherwise. But sometimes they'll slip. And then maybe the older member will be like, ha, how dare you say that to me? Ha ha, yeah, right? Oh, I'm so sorry. I never do that. I can't believe I did that. Ha 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 ha. But really, that's, that's how they normally speak with each other. That happens all the time. If you look for it, you'll hear people slipping when they speak politely, but then they slip and use casual speech and someone will call them out on it. It's not that they actually slipped. It's beca- I mean, it's not that they misused it in real a real situation. It's only because they actually do talk like that off camera. And it, yeah, it's, it's everywhere if you, if you pay attention to it. Okay. Um, All right. So honorific speech is not that complicated, but it does include four separate concepts. And we're going to be going over all of them. It includes verbs. So unique honorific verbs and an honorific verb ending. So we'll learn those first. It also includes nouns and it also includes particles. Yeah, there's four things in there, I promise. So, honorific speech includes unique verbs, a verb ending, nouns, and particles. And all of those are important to know, but of those, the verbs are going to be the most important. So, we're going to start with honorific verb endings. And the way it works is actually very simple. And then I'm going to give you some examples. I want you to participate in this lesson. So, the way to make an honorific verb is you take a regular verb and you get its stem and you attach ushida if that stem ends in a consonant. For example, actually, I can't use both of them because it's literally the one example we can't use. Ikta is to read. Well, the honorific version of ikta is yugushida. Hada is to do. The honorific version of hada is ha. And it doesn't end in a consonant, so you just attach shida, hashida. And you're done. Now you have the honorific form of that verb. There are a couple common exceptions. If the verb stem ends with this letter, not too many of them do. For example, sarda. Sarda means to live. So if you wanted to ask someone, where do you live? And you wanted to be respectful, show that you respect this person or look up to them. You just remove this letter first. So that's all you have to do. And then you attach, well, it ends in a vowel. So you attach shida. Sashida. Now, again, this is the unconjugated verb. This is just the basic form. Or if it ends in this letter, p up. For example, topda, to be hot, like it feels hot, it's hot weather. You get the stem, you remove it just like there, but then you also have to add this. Ooh, and this is something you do with like most verbs, not all verbs, but most verbs that end in this will do the exact same thing. You remove the p up and you add ooh, and then you can attach this again, toushida. That's it. And you're not going to be working with these exceptions most of the time, but they do come up fairly often. So just be aware that this is how it works. Okay. Now we're not done. So now we have the honorific verb of those regular verbs. So hada is hashida, ikta is irigushida, sarda is hashida, topda is toushida. Now we can conjugate those verbs and use them exactly as any other verb, just like we were using the regular verbs. So instead of where do you live? We can say, wait, wait a minute. How do we conjugate this then? Hmm. We have hashida. Well, how do we conjugate a verb normally? Well, you remove the ta, right? If it ends in the vowel o or a, it doesn't end in either of these vowels. That means we attach o, yo, right? But whenever this can be combined with the syllable that it comes before, these actually will stick together. So you get ha sho. It's literally the same thing. Ha shio, ha sho, ha sho yo, right? Well, 
yeah, I can't say it. No, this is not how it works. This is how it works, but it's not. But it is, but just trust me, it's not. This is not how the Yule form is conjugated, but this is how the verb is conjugated. When you're making past tense, you get to here, and then you attach the double things at the bottom, right? The double S's, and then you go like this. Now you have past tense. Hasha soyo. Perfect. You want the future tense? Well, it's the same thing. Hashida. Well, you first get the verb stem, then you add ir koya, like that, you know, or koyo. Hashir koya. Yes, now you have the future tense. All of the conjugation for this works normally, except the yu form. But fortunately, the yu form is very simple. You do not have to do any special conjugation further. Once you get to the finished verb form, you just attach this. And always this. It's never ushe. That's a different thing. Ushe yu. That's the same thing. Ushe yu if it ends. Sorry. Ushe yu if it ends in a consonant or just se yu if it ends. Wait. Yeah, or just seyo if it ends in a vowel. So, hada, we had hashida, well now we can have haseyo, right? Yeah, that's that's it. That's all we have to do. Uh, ikta, for to read, we have irgushida, right? Now we have irgushayo. Now we have the yo form. It's always useyo or seyo for the yo form. Always. Why? Because that was the common variation of it that pe most people ended up using but it doesn't work for any other form. So unless you're making the plain, sorry, unless you're making the regular present tense standard yu form, it'll conjugate like a normal verb. We saw as sha. Just keep that in mind. Okay. <clears throat> and I know a lot of you probably already know this. You've seen it before, like haseyo, like anything like that. Um, I'm just gonna give you some really quick conjugations and then we're gonna do some sentences. So for example, hada, we saw it can become haseyo or hasho. If you're speaking casually, hasho. Haimoni nen, mo hasho? What does your grandmother do? I'm speaking casually to you, but I'm being honorific. I'm being respectful of your grandmother. Hasho. Past tense. Hasho. Hasho is the base form. So hasho so or hasho soyo or hasho sumnida, all of these are now past tense. So it conjugates normally, except in that present tense yu form. Just so you know, it doesn't have any other tricky conjugations, just for that. Um hashige soyo, hashotta, hasho nende. Any of that, anything like that works completely normally. <clears throat> Okay, that is all you need to know about using this ushida form. There's another type of verb we're gonna talk about in a second. But first, I wanna do a few examples because we haven't had, any, had a single example so far. Okay, so I want you to make this sentence. I want you to make some sentences. I have three sentences using this. Do you like, do you like pizza? I want you to make this sentence. I'm gonna give you the words. You need pizza for pizza and then to like. Chuahada. I want you to ask this to pretend you're asking it to me or pretend you're asking it to a stranger or someone you just met or your coworker or a teacher or anyone older than you or anything like that. Ask them, do you like pizza? Now, while you're making this, I'll just keep talking. You can, if you're just asking this normally with the yule form, you can say, Chuaheo or chuahe to your friend. But now I want you to ask it politely. You're talking about someone else. You want to show that you respect them. So how would you ask that? Do you like pizza? <clears throat> Bonus question. How would you say, do you like jazz? Let's see. Traga. Pizza or chuaheo. Perfect. Pizza then chuaheo. Do you like pizza? Yes, Aniki. Perfect. Lexica, perfect. Xandria Waters. Oh, Xandria, it's, it's small typo. Xandria, I know that's a typo because that's not, it's impossible to have it the other way. You're, you're missing the, 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 the things. Uh, let's see. Okay, now let's check the other ones. Chuahaseo, yes. Chuahaseo, 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 chuahaseo. <laughs> Do you know me? That's different. Chuahaseo. 
Uh, Noandi Doris, uh, Haseo, not Heseo, Haseo. Remember, it just attaches to the verb stem. It doesn't conjugate before that. Cesare Tuaseo, yes. Do you like jazz? It's funny how that terrible movie who no one I know has ever watched still entered the, uh, like, what everyone knows. <laughs> Pizza Tua. Oh, and there, you're missing one letter. <clears throat> you're missing one letter. Although, you could do this with Chota. Chota, to be good, can also be used to mean you like something, like I like something or you like something. First person, second person is is fine. And you can say Pizza Tuayo, Tuayo normally. But, or you could also use it with honorific speech, which is Ushida, just like before, which conjugates as Seyo. So you could have done it like this as well. Pizza to seyo. Do you, you like pizza? But we're using toahada, so. Okay, let me give you the answer. And I promise we'll go into, we're going to get a little bit more in depth. Don't worry, in case you've already learned this. I know some of you already have. Pizza to toahaseyo. So do you like haseyo? Pizza, pizza. If it wasn't a question, it would just be pizza or toaseo. Like, you like pizza if I'm talking about you or someone else. Like, hey, what about your grandmother? Pizza or toaseo. She also likes pizza because this has the same meaning as toaseo. Just now it's honorific. Do you like pizza? Pizza or toaseo? Some pizza or toaio. Hatsiman, Hanguk pizza boda, Biguk pizza or toaio. But I like American pizza more than Korean pizza. I'm sorry. Okay, the next sentence I want you to make is, "Are you ready?" Or I shouldn't say it like that. Did you prepare? And the verb for to pre 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 prepare <laughs> is 준비하다. 준비하다 is to prepare. So I want you to make the sentence. Did you prepare? Literally, it's going to be past tense. Did you prepare? You prepared. But that's how you say, are you ready? Is they say, did you prepare? So are you ready? I want you to ask that. Honorifically. Be polite. Yes, Traga. Perfect. Traga says, so if you talk casually with someone, you can ask, Well, you wouldn't use but you could do yes and I think that's what you meant just missing the hada and yes that's exactly what you would do although you couldn't use because is only for first person or second person John Z said I can never pronounce the object marker well you're in luck because most Koreans don't use it anyway it's there even if they don't say it but feel free to just remove it if it's that big of a uh, hurdle for you I couldn't say it for probably like two years, maybe a year, a good year. I wasn't able to pronounce it. Uh, and I can say it pretty good now, especially if it's in a word, then I'm good at it. But if it's like just by itself, yeah, it's, it's, I can say it, but I have to like consciously do it. Or I can say it like it just doesn't naturally flow out. Uh, but in a word, it's fine now. Yes, Lexica. Perfect, as well as Aniki. Perfect. Xandria says, Tuahada. Well, you can use them interchangeably as long as, like I said, as long as it's used for first or second person. So I or you. For he or she, though, you cannot use Chota. You have to use Tuahada. You can say Chunga ba, or Chungo Katai or anything like that. That's okay because it's talking about your own thoughts, but you can't say that person likes with Chota because it, you don't know. 준비 되다, like was prepared. 준비 되셨어요? Like, have you, is it, were you able to get ready? Yeah, that's okay. That would be for a separate lesson about passive. Passive, ver passive voice in Korean is maybe the most common way that they say can and can't in Korean. They just use passive voice and that means could you or would you? Like, were you able to or are, would you be able to? It's kind of polite sounding. Actually, I'll write this down here. So, are you ready? Good 
준비 하셨어요? 준비 하다 means to prepare or to get ready. So literally, are you prepared? Did you get prepared? 준비 하셨어요? Are you ready? 준비 하셨어요? So now it's honorific. 하셨어요. Past tense. The regular way would just be 준비 했어요. You can say 준비 했어요. That's fine. But if you want to be more polite, 준비 하셨어요. I think Expo needs to release like a like a like a wristband that attaches to the pen so I don't drop them specifically for me. They'll call it the Billy Band. I copyright that. 준비 하셨어요? Are you ready? Okay, one more sentence before we go on to the next part of this lesson. You walk into a restaurant. Um actually no no no, I can't do this yet. This is for Oh yeah, this is for section three. Never mind. That's for section three. I'll change that on my notes. Okay. Uh, that is it for this. So that's the most basic way to make honorific verbs. And it applies to like 99% of verbs. We'll do that. <clears throat> but 1% of verbs is still a lot. And that 1% is very common. Certain verbs, however, have unique honorific versions and that must be used instead of the ushida ending. So, the most common one is for mokta. If you want to make if you want to make mokta into honorific, you cannot mogushida. This is never ever used. You could search this, it'll be like a kid misusing it. It's not used. It sounds awkward. There are certain verbs that you have to use a completely different verb for when you're making honorifics, or it'll sound awkward. Mokta is maybe the most common. When you want to say to eat and you want to be honorific, you have to use a different verb. Tushida. Now, the actual reason, I'm not going to put this in the abridged version, so if you're if you're more intermediate, uh, you can listen for a second. <clears throat> tushida, it's actually not really a sep it's not really that tushida is a special verb by, by itself. Tushida is actually the honorific version of a verb. Tuda. Tuda means to eat, but it's a polite way of saying to eat. They like, they'll use it for uh, talking about more, it's more polite, like to consume, to feast upon, to eat. It's, it just has a nicer ring to it. But this verb is not used anymore. But the honorific version of this, tushida. That's why this also conjugates the same as tuseyo, with seyo, just like before. So you're not really using a, necessarily a separate verb, but you can think of it like it's a separate verb. Okay, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just ignore that. You don't need to know that. Just if you're curious. Um, so if you want to say to eat honorifically, you have to use tushida. And this conjugates the exact same. It ends with shida. It becomes seyo. Or in the past tense, dushosoyo, like that. So it's a completely normal verb, just you have to learn a separate verb. And that's not the only one. There are several of these verbs that you should learn. That's maybe one of the most common. Another one you'll see. <clears throat> for tada, to sleep. You wouldn't say tashida. Tashida sounds, sounds weird. Chumushida is to sleep, honorifically. Good night in Korean is annyeonghi chumuseyo. Chumuseyo. It's not annyeonghi taseyo. Annyeonghi tayo. Annyeonghi chumuseyo. So that's have a good night. Literally, sleep in peace. Sounds like foreboding. Sleep in peace, my friend. <laughs> yeah, 주무시다. You can just write these down. Um, except for that expression, though, like 주무, 안녕히 주무세요. You don't hear this one too much, but you might say like, oh, your grandmother is currently sleeping, like that. Another common one, well, hopefully not too common, for to die, you would not say chugushida. It sounds funny. <clears throat> they actually use the verb toragashida, 
which is it's also from toragada meaning to return to go back toragashida is to die or pass away and it's the honorific version so if you said um it sounds like very impolite. My grandmother, oh yeah, he kicked the bucket. Like kind of what it sounds like. Toragashida is means to pass away. Like, yeah. It's a more respectful way of saying that someone died. And this one tends to get used anyway for when you say someone passed away. It just Toragashida. Okay, hopefully you're just writing these down. There's nothing else you really need to learn about them. They conjugate the same way. Okay, next though. Oh, hey, Traga! Hold on, I got a donation. My first donation, Traga! I gotta, I gotta get a new pen. I have, I have more of these, I have to switch. Traga, thank you so much. Uh, dabs? All right, here we go, six dabs. Get some music. Okay, you gotta get six dabs here. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Right, let's see, how's everyone doing? All right, everyone's doing okay? Yes, uh, Ma Maddie asks, would you cur would you double it up with tsumushigo keseyo? Yes, you can. And we're gonna talk about that next. Ita for to exist. Normally, you'd ask, is someone there? 지금 있어요? 집에 없어요. 철수는 지금 집에 없어요. 철수 is not at home, like he's not there. With a person, if you want to use honorific speech, you don't use 있으시다. Isushida is wrong for a person. 100% for a person, isushida is wrong. We'll talk about this though in a second. Instead, you use keshida. Keshida, which also conjugates the same way. Keseyo. Jibe keseyo. Halmoni nan jigum jibe keseyo. Grandmother's at our house right now. Keseyo. And then the opposite of ita is opta, right? To not exist. Well, that one's just angeshida. Keshida and angeshida. So this is pretty easy. You don't have to learn another verb. It's just keshida and angeshida. Okay. However, I said you would not use isishida for a person. Ever. If you said, Harmoni nan jibe isuseyo, it sounds, it sounds wrong, but it also sounds awkward. It just sounds weird. You would never use isushida for talking about a person. You have to use keshida, no matter what you're trying to do. But that's not to say that isushida and opsushida are not used. They do get used. These can be used to talk, to show extra respect towards someone else when you're talking about something that they own directly. For an example, you're, you want to say that someone has beautiful eyes. <clears throat> oh, actually, you wouldn't use ita for that. You use yepushida. You can use honorifics when you're talking about things that someone has, like directly belong to them, like their body parts, like their eyes or their hands. Like, she, uh, that person has two hands. I mean, you wouldn't say this. I mean, yeah, it's true. They have two hands. Their bag. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Billy. I'm so sorry, but I checked in the back. And actually, we don't have uh, the uh, your bag that you, uh, that you left here. We don't have it. You can use something, you can also use honorifics to talk about other people's time. 지금 혹시 시간이 있으세요? 있으세요? 있다. You're not talking about them. You could not say 시간이 계세요. Because you can never use the honorific 
verb to talk about a thing. It has to be about a person. So when you're saying that the person is or isn't at a location, use keshida or angeshida. But if you're talking about a thing and you want to be extra respectful because it directly is belonging to that person, then you can use isushida and opsushida. So you will see these used for objects. So some examples I gave you would be like their eyes or their hands, their bag, their time, something that they bought or something they're buying. It's acceptable. Although it technically is incorrect because you shouldn't be using honorifics about objects. But it's done so much that I'd say it's accepted. I'd say it's okay. No one's going to say your Korean is wrong. In fact, if you said, it sounds almost casual because so many people use these nowadays to talk about directly related items. So again, <clears throat> you'll see these when talking about things. Don't use these for talking about people. And then the other way, don't use keshida and angeshida for talking about things ever. Like, kabangi chigam yogi angeseyo. Sounds like the bag is a is like royalty or something. It sounds really weird. I don't know. Maybe it's like a, a like a Chanel bag or something. I don't know. A really expensive brand. Then maybe I'll 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 give it to you. Otherwise, no. Okay. I want to have some. I think that's it for yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and then one more, one more. Ida for to be. The honorific form is not special. It's just as you would expect. Ishida, which can become iseyo or isosoyo, just like normal. Nothing special about that. However, you also can use ishida, just like any other honorific verb, for talking about things that directly belong to someone else. So this is another common one that you'll see. But it doesn't really have a special honorific form. I'm just writing it up here because I haven't shown you ida yet. Okay. Now I'm going to give you some sentences. Hopefully you're doing okay. Hopefully you're following along. Let's see. A new person comes to the group. Formal speech is used between members. When no pe new people are, they may use casual one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Yeah. Because you want to appear as if you... You want to let everyone know that you are respecting these other people. But then when they're not listening, then you can go back to talking however you want. Because... There are no rules in Korean when Koreans are just speaking it to each other. They're not thinking about, hold on, you can't say that to me. I am three years younger than you and your boss's best friend's girlfriend's brother. And in that case, we must use this level of politeness speech. It's all done based on feeling. And I mean, I don't mean like they have some instinct to use the right politeness level. I just mean it's just the feeling of I want to show extra respect to this person. I look up to them. The end. And that's how they, that's all of the exceptions are based on that. Do you look up to or respect your wife's brother if he's 10 years younger than you? Do I? Well, I think so because I'm not close with him. So yes, I would use honorific speech. It's not an exception. It's not a special rule you have to learn. Like, oh, well, what about this and this and this? It's just, would I respect that person because of our relationship? Do I feel close with them? Do I want to show respect to them? If yes, then do it. If not, then no. You're, you, you meet uh, your Korean girlfriend's parents. Do I need to show extra respect to their parents? Hmm. Do you want to show that you respect them? Do you want to say you kind of look up to them? Yes, definitely. What if they introduce me to their coworker? Do you know that coworker? No. Yes, use honorifics to them. What if that coworker introduces me them to their their five year old kid who I've never met before? Do you want to show you have extra respect toward that kid? No, because it's a child. Other than that, like everything is just based on this feeling of do you want to show respect to someone or not? That's it. And all the exceptions just come from that. It's not magic. There's not a rule book you have to memorize, which is great. I think honorifics, once you once you see not just honorifics, but all speech levels have a feeling to them. Once you see that the feeling of each one, it, it'll all make sense. You'll be like, oh, duh, of course I should use humble speech, honorific speech, casual speech here. It's not magic. It's me, Jesse's daughter here to learn Korean. <laughs> <laughs> no, buanya. Yeah, Jesse, buanya. <laughs> but actually, uh, if I were to meet Jesse one on one, we know each other, so we could use probably casual speech. But then in front of other people, maybe we're like at a meeting and there are other people that we don't know. And it's clear that we are, uh, we're not, 
you know, related or maybe he's a coworker, then we might switch to polite speech just when the boss is listening or something like that and then go back to casual. It's 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 really just about the feeling. Do I want to show to anyone who's listening that I respect the person that I'm talking about? Yes or no? Yes, honorifics. No, no honorifics. That's it. And then the people that they typically do show respect to is going to be based on relation with them. And then age is the most important. So if they're older than me, that means by default, I'm going to think I should respect them. Like that, that's pretty much it. Okay, next sentence I want you all to make. Now we've got, we've gone over honorific verbs. So I have three sentences I want you to make. Um, So what kind of thing do you want to eat? So this is going to take two forms. You're going to use eat and you're going to probably use the koshita form for want to. Now there's a little trick in here. I'm not trying to trick you, but there's a little trick in here. So be careful when you write it. Don't rush. Take your time. What kind of thing as in here, it's like, what kind of food, what kind of thing do you want to eat? What kind of thing do you want to eat today? What kind of thing do you want to eat? Make this sentence. I've given you the first two words. Is that called nunchi? Nunchi is another thing that you'll hear Koreans explain as difficult to translate. It is literally social awareness. And yes, it is difficult to translate into one word because that could be several types of social awareness. It can be awareness of how someone else feels, what they're thinking. Um, and despite what you may have heard, Koreans don't have it any more than we have it. Uh, it's just a well-known word in Korean. It's just being aware of what other people are thinking and what other people are feeling. That's it. So are you paying attention to that? Like, do you care what other people are thinking about or looking at or whatever? That's just having nunchi or not. Yeah. So social awareness or situational awareness or emotional awareness, however you want to call it, awareness, perception of other people specifically. And yeah, you would have basic level of nunchi just to know how to speak with someone else. But if you don't, then just default to being polite. That's all you have to do. If you feel like lazy, you're out of it, just be polite. Like to strangers, you're like, oh, I don't want, I can't think about how I should address them. Do I look up to them? It doesn't matter. Just be polite because you don't know. Reading the room. There you go. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, Traga. Perfect. Oh, and Traga says I missed a new member. Did I? Hold on. Oh yeah, Joanna, Joanna, uh, I'm just going to say Dene because I know Penne is pronounced as Penne like this. So Joanna, Joanna Dene, welcome. Let's see. Aniki, otongo tushigo shipuseo, perfect. As well as uh, Lexica, same sentence, perfect. And Zandria, unagi is total unagi. What is unagi? The unagi, like like eel. <laughs> I love unagi. I'm not a big fan of the unagi on rice though, unagi don, but I do like the unagi by itself. Okay, so in Korea, if your boss wants to impress you, if your boss wants to impress, if a boss wants to impress his or her workers, employees and show them, look how look how good of a boss I am and look how successful of a company we are. There are two, I'm not exaggerating, there are two things that a boss will buy for someone else to show off his or her wealth and how good he treats his, his or her employees. The two things are, one of them is tango. Tango is unagi, it's eel, but uh, it's kind of expensive. It's not like cheap. Like there, there's cheap eel that you'll get on top of rice. This is like the high quality eel that's roasted right in front of you. It's delish, it's really good, tango. The next thing they'll buy for you would be chobap, so sushi, these two things. So if, if someone says that their boss is buying them these, that means they're they're like bragging, like my boss got me. It's, it's these two things, always these two things. There's literally no originality. It's these two things. I guess you can add on ori, but that one's less common nowadays. But ori, like duck, would also be another expensive item. But these two are like the most show-offy items, I think. Oh, hey, Courtney. And also flow purdy, perfect. Otongo tushigo shipuseo. Courtney, thank you so much. Courtney, I'm gonna give you 10 dabs. One, two, three, four. 
<laughs> Still have my cold. Five, <coughs> six, <coughs> ten. Ten dabs. Oh, that was wonderful. Now I'm lightheaded. Oh. Okay. Um. Okay, let me give you the sentence. So instead of mokda, tushida. So you would do that. You would make the verbs honorific. So mokda, tushigo, shipda, shipuseyo. Otongo, tushigo, shipoyo is fine, actually, too. But it's more polite. It's even more respectful if you make all the verbs talking about them into honorific. So otongo, tushigo, shipuseyo. So what kind of thing, what kind of food here do you want to eat? Tushigo, shipuseyo. 드시고 싶으세요 would have the same meaning as 먹고 싶어요 어떤 거 먹고 싶어요 어떤 거 드시고 싶으세요 어떤 거 드시고 싶으세요 same meaning <clears throat> hot tea and honey no i'm gonna have some cold caffeine that's exactly what my throat needs yes you do okay uh, next, let's see, one more, two more. Okay. Actually, I'm just going to give you the sentence. It's kind of a boring sentence, so that's why I'll just give it to you. 아직, still, or yet, 하고 계세요. So, you don't have to use every single verb in honorific speech if you want. But if it has a separate, unique version, then you must. If you're saying, for example, hago isoyo, like you're still doing it, ajik hago isoyo, you don't have to say hashigo keseyo. You can, it's more polite, but it's fine to say just hago. For our previous example, though, with mokta, you have to, if it has a unique version, you have to say tushigo. You can't say mokko keseyo. You have to use it if it has a unique version. If it doesn't have a unique version, like hada or most verbs, just use the verb normally, you're going to be fine. You can make all of them, though, honorific. If you just want to be safe, you're not sure, go ahead. But it sounds a little bit, it sounds very polite, but it's okay. For example, like they are really enjoying it. It sounds okay. It's just not necessary to use it. Okay, and one more sentence. This is what I want you to make. Is there something you need? I want you to make this sentence, and you're going to use the verb 필요하다. 필요하다, again, does not translate, well, translates. It does not mean to need. 필요하다 means literally to be necessary, to be needed. So you're going to ask, is there something? Is there a necessary thing? Is there a necessary thing? And you're going to use piruhada. You're going to use kot or call. And you're going to do something with ita to exist. So is there something you need? Literally, is there a needed thing? Oh yeah, Serena asks tapsushi da tapsushi da there and there's another one as well. Uh jinji as well. We're not going to cover that. But uh tapsushi da is even more honorific. Uh there's another verb tapsuda. And that is used by older people. The older generation sometimes still uses the verb uh tapsushi da. It also means to eat. It's just higher than tushida. And uh yeah, it's not used very much, but I've heard it like once or twice. It's just not very common. So I'm not teaching in here, but if you know that, that's great. Tapsushi da is a step above tushida, but you're not going to use it. I mean, you could say, uh, well, like, have you partaken of any food supplement today? My dearest grandmother. It's, it's a little bit. I don't know. I feel like it's a little bit overly formal unless you're using it to maybe like your older grandparents or something. <laughs> yes. Aniki. Perfect. Uh, typo 
Uh, never mind. No, you didn't have a typo. Lexica as well. Perfect. Let's see a few other ones. Pirong. Uh, Maddie, small typo for my, uh, kot, not kat. Kat is the name of the traditional Korean hat. That is called a kat. So like, <laughs> like this, this kind of hat, you know what I'm talking about? This is a kat. Pirong kashi, is there, is there a Korean hat that you by chance need? Yeah, so that would be kat. Perfect, Traga, and very polite. Yes, I, lo I love that you've even added honor, uh, sorry, formal speech to that. Yes, Lexica. Perfect. Okay, so. I'm just gonna like mess up my hair, I swear. Or mess up my hat, or both. My hair's already pretty messed up. Okay. So this one uses isuseyo because again, we're not saying is there a person? We're saying is there a thing called pidyohan kot? Something that's necessary, something you need. Isuseyo, is there something that you need? Do you need anything? Pidyohango isuseyo? Is there something you need? Pidyohango isuseyo? Okay, so now you've learned the basic You've learned the verb ending for honorific speech. You've learned unique verbs. Well, there are two more concepts you still need to know. Honorific nouns and honorific particles. And it's it's not a big deal. Certain nouns. Oh, Isabel. Hold on. Isabel. Isabel. Isabel Santana. I'm just going to write Santa. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'll put Santana. Thank you so much. I'll give you 10 dabs. Turn on my dab music. Get some kooksy over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, <coughs> nine, ten. Oh. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, I'm, I'm doing good. Getting a little lightheaded. All right. Oh. Okay, certain nouns are also used when you're speaking honorifically. Again, when you're talking about someone else. So you would not use these nouns to talk about yourself. I'll tell you what they are. Oops, what am I saying? First, zip, the regular word for a house. Now, this is not zip for restaurant. This is zip. For house, someone's home, the actual, you know, where someone lives. If you're talking about your own house, your friend's house, you're just going to say cheap. If you're talking about someone else's house, you can also say cheap. Or if you want to show extra respect toward someone else, someone else's house who you respect, who you look up to, their house is not a cheap. Their house is a tech. Tech. So your grandmother's house. Haimoni cheap. It's okay. You want to be extra respectful? Halmoni tek. Halmoni tege nollo gasoyo. So I went to hang out at my grandmother's house. Tek. These ones you can just write down. Uh, there are not a lot of these though. There are several, but I'm only giving you the most common ones. There are like another a few handful of them. You do not need to know every single one because no one, literally no one uses everyone. Like there is one for rice, for food. That's jinji. You can write this down if you want, just because it'll, it'll appear in a textbook. I have literally heard someone use this once and it was in a grammar explanation. It's just not used anymore. But there is the word jinji. You might hear people say like, oh, jinji, jinji, tapsu shoshoyo, like that. You're not, you're not going to use it. <clears throat> so you don't need to know this one. Um... Here, let me give you a really common one. 사람, for person. 저는 미국 사람이에요. 철수 씨는 한국 분이세요. I'm showing extra respect toward 철수 by using the word 분 instead of 사람. Same meaning. 
미국 사람, 미국 분. 한국 사람, 한국 분. 분 means 사람. But it is honorific. You can count people. Normally, you count people with 명. 한 명, 두 명, 세 명, like that. 한 분, 두 분, 세 분. Same thing. Do you want to show respect? When you walk into a restaurant, they're not going to ask you, 몇 명? 몇 명이에요? How many people? Like, how many, how many, how, how many people are in your group, eh? They're not going to, like, do that. They're going to say, how many people with 분? In fact, I have a sentence coming up for that. Next. Did you know that the word Edom is actually pretty casual? It's pretty uh, informal. It's not very polite to say someone else's name unless they are kind of similar age as you by using the word Edom. You wouldn't say Edom y Moyo to someone who's older than you. That sounds actually kind of rude. Edom is just a really casual, everyday sort of word you can use to talk about someone's name. Your own name is always Edom. But if you're talking about someone else who you'd want to show respect to, you use this word, Song Ham. Song Ham. Song Ham means name. Same thing, but it's the honorific version. Song Ami Otukedeseo, like what's your name? You wouldn't say Idami Otukedeseo. Idami Otukedeseo is okay, but that's if you're meeting someone else who's like a similar age as you, and you don't, you don't need to be necessarily super respectful to them. You just want to say, oh, what's your name? You know, you look kind of like my age. I'll be honorific to you. But I'm not going to be like super honorific by also using songam. So that's another thing to keep in mind is that you do not need to use honorific nouns every time you're using honorific speech. Honorific nouns elevate your honorific speech more, but they're not 100% necessary like honorific speech otherwise is. You do need to use the verb stem or honorific verbs when you're speaking about other people you want to show respect to. But you do not need to use honorific nouns or honorific particles, which we'll do next, most of the time. Or I shouldn't say most of the time. A lot of the time. You don't have to. You can get away with using regular nouns. But if you use honorific nouns, it's a little bit better. So just letting you know, you don't always have to use these. You're not really going to get in trouble if you don't. But it can be a little bit too casual if, you're, if you really want to show extra respect towards someone and you use these regular nouns. Okay, next. Only two more. Nai, for someone's age. Again, your own age would always be nai. Someone else's age, if you want to show respect, would be yonse. Yonse also means age. Literally, it means year age. So it's the same thing. I'll give you a second to write this down. What do you call an architect in Korea? A techie. No. <laughs> no, I will not. I will not participate. <laughs> okay. And last and least. Sangir <laughs> for your birthday. You use the word 생일 for your own birthday, your friend's birthday, you know, your close family members' birthdays, like your brothers, your sisters, your parents, it's okay. Your grandparents, though, or other people's grandparents, or other people's parents, or your teacher, anyone you want to show extra respect toward, 생신. 생신 also means birthday. Same thing. If you forget and you just say 생일, but you use honorifics otherwise, you're going to sound okay. They're not going to get mad at you. They're going to be like, oh, well, it would have been better if you used 생신 here, but it doesn't. it's not going to sound like rude is what I mean. So most important is honorific verbs. Keep that in mind. If you forget everything else, honorific verbs will make your speech sound good enough for any of those situations. But you want to go a little bit above and beyond honorific nouns. We'll add that little last touch. So that's all you need to know for honorific nouns. Let me give you a sentence. I have two example sentences here. Okay. Three, three. Oh, yeah. How many people you walk into a restaurant and the waiter or waitress is going to ask if you're a group of people or even if you're by yourself, how many people when you walk in, they're going to use the word myot. Myot is a counter word that when it's used in a question means how many. So how would you ask someone 
how many people is it? How many people is your group? They're not asking how many people are there, but they're asking how many people is your group? Is. Maybe maybe we'll use the verb ida in there somewhere. I don't know. So how many people? What is the waiter or waitress going to say? <laughs> You're too fast. Traga. Perfect. As well as Aniki. Perfect. As well as Lexica. Perfect. <clears throat> Natalie says, would you use it if you're singing happy birthday? Saying you're too... No, it's just hanging here. But you wouldn't be singing happy birthday to you. Uh, <clears throat> they, don't, they don't do that to older people. They just don't care. It's like the happy birthday song is like... I feel like more mostly younger people. I'm trying to think, would I would I do that to an older person if I was close with them? Saying your chuk. No, you should still say saying your chukahamnida. You wouldn't even use um, humble speech. Chukahamnida. You wouldn't do saying shin chuka It sounds awkward. Yeah, it would still be saying your chukahamnida. Yeah, but the song, not the phrase. You would say saying shin chukahamnida to say happy birthday to them. But if you're singing it, it's saying your chukahamnida. It's it goes back to the default. Yes, as well. Uh, yeah, Xandria, perfect. Flow Purdy, perfect. I'll give you the answer, but you already got it. You walk into a restaurant, they're going to ask you, how many? So that's how many people? So but they wouldn't say because it's like, it's half complete. It's not quite honorific. So, how many people? When you walk in, you're here. You're always going to hear this. And how do you reply? You would not ever reply hanbun or tubun. You don't reply with pun for yourself, right? You would reply with myung, the regular person counter. Han myung yeo, han myung yeo, one person. Like I'm by myself. So lonely. Tu myung yeo, ne myung yeo, like that. Ne myung. You would say you're the, the number of people with myung, but they would ask it with pun. Okay, next sentence. I want you to make this as well. Here we go. Okay. Today is my grandmother's birthday. This one is a little tricky. I say it's tricky because there's one part where you might not want to use honorifics. So, okay. You are talking with... <clears throat> You could be talk, saying this to your friend. You can be saying this to anyone. Today is my grandmother. <clears throat> Today is my grandmother's birthday. How would you make this sense? How would you make this sentence? Aniki says, would you use hi or say in honorific speech? Yeah, um, you would use say. And we're not going into all that. There are actually a few other a few other things we could talk about for like specific words you'd use for honorifics. But it's not that say is specifically honorific. It's that say is just more polite. Um, but they use say as well. But say tends to get used for older uh, ages. But you can also use it for yourself too. So it's not like it's it's not a part of honorific speech necessarily. That's why I didn't include it in this lesson because it's not really directly a part of honorific speech. It's just a more polite way of saying age with say. And that uses Sino-Korean numbers. For anyone else listening, you don't really need to learn that right now. But uh, there is another counter for age, which is se, which uses Sino-Korean instead of pure Korean. And yeah, for older ages, they use that a lot. But then not always. It kind of depends on the, the person. Yes, Traga. Yes, perfect. On a key. Hi, what do you think? Yes, perfect. All right, you didn't get trapped. I thought you would get trapped and make everything honorific because again you're not talking about you're not making the the birthday honorific it already i mean the word itself already is honorific you don't need to make iseo as well you could though directly talking to the person saying shiniseo like but you wouldn't use it when you're just talking about it normally it's already itself it's already honorific harmony saying shiniseo Ieo, you'd use for this. Sengjin Ieo. Uh, flow, small typo, but yes, your sentence is good. Sengjin, not Sengjin. Sengjin. Okay, anyone else want to give it a try? Go ahead. You got like 10 seconds.
if anyone like likes this sort of stuff, <laughs> like you like all of the details for honorific speech and politeness levels, I did a full course completely free on my YouTube channel called Master Politeness Levels with Billy Go. It's 24 episodes and it goes into everything. And I mean everything, like even down to like, well, what about I heard these two celebrities on TV use casual speech and then switch to this? Or how come I use this, heard this level mixed in with this level, everything. Or like, what about writing and which levels writing? Everything is covered in there. All the politeness levels that are used. Although it, I admittedly, it doesn't have uh, two of the archaic forms, which are usually nowadays only used by some older people. Uh, but it does have every modern politeness level explained in there. And yeah, it's completely free. There's nothing you can buy at all. It's just completely free course. And yeah, it goes into all this in like excruciating detail. Uh, but it does also go into it in general detail, which just kind of teaches, you know, all of the feelings. So if you just learn the feelings of them, you can you can still use them pretty well. Okay. 오늘 할머니 생신이에요. So today is my grandmother's 할머니 생신. Her birthday. Yeah. Because you're just saying the birthday. It doesn't need to be honorific. You're not directly referring to a birthday as a person. It's just a birthday. But now it sounds polite. 생신이에요. 오늘 할머니 생신이에요. It's my grandmother's birthday today. Okay. The last thing that you should know for honorific speech is also the least important about honorific speech, and that is particles. When you are using honorific speech, there are a few particles that you can use instead. Instead of the topic marker, you will see Actually, let me write this a little bit better. You will see Gesonen. That is the topic marker. So if you want to mark someone who you want to be honorific about, and talk about them, instead of saying 할머니는, you could say 할머니 계소는. If you wanted to talk about them with the subject marker, like you said, your grandmother, uh, she is out of the house. <clears throat> 할머니께서 30분 전에 나가셨어요. My grandmother left 30 minutes ago. She left 30 minutes ago. 계소, for the topic, for the subject marker. Or to say to a person, you can use the particle ge. Notice they all have ge in them. Ge, ge so then, ge so, ge. So this means two, although it does have another meaning we won't talk about for, for this lesson, but yeah, it, it's generally the replacement for two. So, 할머니 ge 물어봤어요. I asked it to 할머니에게, 할머니한테, I asked it to my grandmother. 할머니 ge 물어봤어요. I asked my grandmother. Ge, ge so then, ge so then. Wait, ge, ge so, ge so then. These are honorific particles, but I'll say this. These are not required. So that kind of sounds weird. Like we're talking about how you need to be extra polite and you want to use honorific verbs. The verbs are the most important you want to use. Next is you definitely want to use some of those nouns. Of the nouns, boon is going to be the most common one you're going to see for people. For the particles, use them if you'd like you will get away with not using them because your sentence can still sound very polite just by adding the proper verbs. So if you said, 할머니는 주무시고 계세요, like she's currently sleeping, that sounds very polite. You don't need to say, 할머니께서는 지금 주무시고 계세요. It sounds very respectful, very polite. It's probably overly polite uh, considering, you know, if depending on who your grandmother is or depending how much respect you want to show. You do not always need to use these. I would say if you feel like you want to show extra respect, a little bit above and beyond, add these and you will see these, but don't feel like you have to do this where everything, everything like if for the other examples we had, um, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, and then again, this only would go after a person. So you wouldn't say like, uh, 
Pizza kesonen mashisoyo. Like pizza tastes good. This doesn't make any sense. It's only for people. So it would only go after a person's name. Never after an object. Never. You would never say, wow, you're kabang, kabang keso, tongmar yepuseo. It sounds really weird. This is always only the person. So these are not necessary, but again, if you want to be more respectful, I do recommend using these. And you'll see them. Uh, these are also commonly used with, uh, like this one is really commonly used together with a humble verb, turida, which would be for a different lesson. So you'll see like, like that sounds okay. Uh, but these ones are, they sound really polite. So yeah, just know that they exist. Okay. I have for this, I have three sentences I want you to do as well. <clears throat> I want you to make the sentence, <coughs> excuse me, the boss, the boss is going to be 사장님, the boss left early, for early you're going to use 일찍, and then you're going to use the verb 나가다 to leave. So the boss left early, but I want you to make this as polite as humanly possible. Like the boss is the king. And you do not want to make the king mad. And you're speaking with a customer. Like, this is the most polite. Make this sentence as polite as humanly possible. Although you don't have to do, you don't have to like change the verbs or anything. So the boss left early. Go at it. Is Hengxin more formal than Hengyer? Not more formal, but honorific. Like I said, you could say, 할머, 오늘 할머니 생신이야. Today is my grandmother's birthday, yo. Like, it's casual. So it's, it doesn't have to do with formality. It's about the polite, it's about the respect you want to show to the person. Serena says, if I want to say I gave a gift to my grandmother, I do not need to put the ending verb in honorific form, right? That's right. You wouldn't say, however, uh, you would use the honorific form. Uh, sorry, not honorific. There is a humble, there's something called humble speech, which is literally two verbs. And the one of those verbs is chuda, to give. The other one is to see, pueda, they say to see, or petta as well. Um, that's the same verb though. Turida, turida is chuda in humble speech. So you'd use humble instead of honorific since you're talking about yourself, you can use humble speech. And humble speech, again, literally is two verbs. We would do a less separate lesson about that. So you wouldn't say, ge chosoyo. You would have to use turiosoyo in that case if you wanted to show any sort of extra respect. And humble speech is just the other half of honorific speech, but it's so it's such a small topic. I could do it for today, but for time I won't. It would be like an extra five minutes. Yes, Traga, perfect. Anaki, perfect. Oh wow, yeah, you got nagashosunida, perfect. 사장님께서 일찍 나가셨습니다, perfect. Yep, yep, yep. But your first sentence is totally fine. Hi, I'm from Togo, West Africa. I almost read that as Toto Africa. And I was like, isn't that the song? Let's see, Zandria. Oh, yes, yes. 사장님께서는 일찍 나가셨습니다. Perfect. Let's see a few other sentences from our, uh, the other viewers. Trevon, nice. Diane, nice. Nice. Okay, any other, any other attempts? I'm going to write the answer. Go ahead and... You have about like 10, 20 seconds to try again. Oh, I need to have more space for this because it's... I'll just do this. It's hot. Oh, let's see. Did anyone else do it? Lexica, yes. You got it? Oh, okay. Oh, I see. I that was you you had already messaged that. 사장님께서는 so 사장님은 일찍 early 나가셨어요. So 나가다 to leave to go out. So the boss 나가셨어요 left early. And it ends with the regular you form. So that's the level of politeness shown to the person you're speaking to. Like, hey, yeah, yeah. Left early. 나가셨어요. But now it's honorific toward the boss. Naga shosoyo. I could even say, 사장님께서는 일찍 나가셨어. If I'm talking to a friend, although I might not go as far as to add this, but yeah, it's it has nothing to do with the formality. It's just how much respect am I showing toward the person I'm talking about? 
사장님께서는 일찍 나가셨어요. So the boss left early. Next sentence I want you to make. The teacher is smart. So obviously the word for teacher, I'm just going to write it. I know you already know it. 선생님 for teacher and then to be smart is 똑똑하다. <clears throat> the teacher is smart. Now this is not referring to me. I didn't say Billy. Just a teacher. So your teacher, you can say this to your teacher. You can say the teacher is smart. And if you used one particle in your last sentence, switch and try the other one this time. Just so you can get experience using both of them. Trega says, I never know when to use E or UN in this situation. Remind me after this lesson, I'll give you a really quick way to remember when to use topic marker, subject marker. I have a secret. There's a really easy way to know when you should use the topic marker or the subject marker <coughs> in Korean. 선생님께서는 똑똑하십니다. Sure, perfect, but annoying. It's dialect, but yeah, that works. Traga, 선생님께서는 똑똑하십니다. Perfect. And you could do this with casual speech, right? Because it depends on who you're talking with. You're talking about the teacher, so you're being respectful, but the person you're talking to currently, unless it's the teacher, then you can you might want to be extra respectful and make it formal or maybe informal with you. Oh, Serena, Billy 선생님께서는 똑똑하십니다. Oh, thank you. So, so nice. So nice. I don't get to hear that too often. <coughs> 선생님, 많이 똑똑하다. You want to conjugate it, <clears throat> but you're off to a good start. You just need to conjugate it. I'm going to give you an answer here. I wrote this kind of smashed together. Let me do that again. Sonsengimkeso. So Sonsengimi. Doktokaseo. Doktokada is very, or not is very, is smart. Sonsengimkeso. Doktokaseo. So the teacher. Keso. So now it, the listener immediately knows that the speaker is saying they have. A lot of respect for the teacher. 선생님께서 똑똑하세요. And since it ends with you, it's just the regular informal you form. Even though it has 하세요, this is not especially polite, right? It's general. It's just basic polite with you, but it's not like extra polite because again, it's just the you form and this honorific is unrelated. It's just because of the person you're talking about. You could say again, if you're talking with your friend, the teacher, 선생님께서 똑똑하셔. You're talking with your friend, right? Or you're talking with, uh, the, the directly with the teacher. 하십니다. Like that. It has nothing to do with formality. It's just how much respect are you showing to the person you're talking about. Again, the key word is talking about. Not necessarily talking to. <clears throat> and that is everything you need to know about honorific speech. So I'm going to take a thumbnail. That is everything for our lesson. I'm going to take a thumbnail image really quick. So let's see. Maybe that I'll use for the thumbnail. <laughs> I always need a thumbnail. Um, and really quick again, <clears throat> in case you missed the announcement in the beginning, I'll announce it again. I have a brand new book, just came out a few weeks ago, called Korean Reading Made Simple 2, which has 10 natural, as in a native Korean could read this and not think it sounds awkward. It just sounds like a regular story. Natural folk tales. And these are 10 of my favorite folk tales that I picked out. Well, together with my wife, we, we picked them out together, but they're all my favorite. Uh, in those, my favorite one of those is uh, called Myeolchie Kum, The Anchovy Dream. And the stories are all native level. So they're very high level, but I broke it down so that you can understand them. As long as you have a basic understanding of grammar and vocabulary already, you'll be able to follow along the stories. So yeah, all the grammar's there, all vocabulary is there, grammar's broken down, really short lessons. So it's not like a gigantic 10 page lesson of everything. It's just enough so that you can at least follow along with it. And uh, yeah, just came out. It's pretty affordable. I think it's uh, 
ten dollars in ebook form and maybe a uh, 15 or 20 in print you have to you have to check what it is it kind of changes but yeah check it out just came out okay now i can take questions for a few minutes thumbnail with the hat oh that's a good idea that's a good idea maybe i should take a thumbnail doing the uh the korean hat Okay, maybe maybe I'll use that instead. We'll we'll see. The fish names in that one are tripping me up. The fish name oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Mangdungal. And all the fish names, like we don't the the reason is because those are fish that Koreans would know, but they're not fish that we commonly eat in the US. So it's like, what's uh you know, we know anchovy, but that's pretty much it. The rest of them would be like, what's this uh this uh this random fish i've never heard of this thing rock fish what's this uh yeah but then there is a shrimp so you know that one oh, okay so uh traga asks so what's the secret for topic versus subject marker okay First of all, you have to already know what the topic marker and the subject marker are. Un, nun for the topic marker, e for e ka for the subject marker. You also need to know how generally they're used. This is not a lesson on how they work in general because, well, okay, topic marker is you you have a bubble floating above your head when in the conversation. There's one bubble floating around every conversation, and it says what the topic is. And when you use a topic marker, it changes what you're talking about. That's how it works. So you can say, oh, chonin, blah, 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 blah. And they say, oh, chonin, now it's talking about them. And they say, oh, pizza, now you're talking about pizza. Hanguk now you're talking about Korean food, whatever. That's the topic. And everyone knows that it's there because they heard you change the topic. So they know they can all see that bubble. They know what it says. That's the general way it works. However, there's an even there's an even easier way to know well, when do I use which one because the subject the top marker does that the subject marker though all it does is marks the subject of a verb. So by that I mean subject is something that does an action verb like tega hesoyo I did it. So now it's like me I did that verb. So it's I'm the subject of that verb. For a descriptive verb for something describing the subject marker marks what is being described. So tega so it's me, I am the smart one. I am, I'm the subject of what's being described. It doesn't have any special intonation though like that. It's just, this is marking what's being described or what's doing something. And this, however, creates a new topic. And because of that, both of these are used all the time. In fact, many sentences, you can switch them and the sentence is still correct. It just has a different nuance. So what is the difference? What is that nuance difference? Well, we actually have a... In English, we have something we do in English. You probably do it in your own language. That is the topic marker. Actually, let me see. So you go into a zoo. And there's a tiger. So you want to start talking about tigers. So you say, Horanginen Musoyo. Tigers are scary. Well, Okay, now you have a new topic. Great, we get it. Or you could say, Horangi ga busoyo. Yeah, tigers are scary. Well, you might not use that because there's no, it's kind of random to say tigers are scary. If there's no topic about tigers, you're not, you're not talking about them. Random just saying, Horangi ga busoyo. Tigers are scary. Well, in English, we actually do a distinction between these. In English, we don't do it with any word. We have this intonation in English. Actually, let me re redraw this. This intonation is the topic marker in English. I'll, I'll show you what I talk what I talk about. Tigers. I, I. It goes up, down below it where it started, and back up to where it started. This is what we do for the topic marker in English. It is not a special rule that Koreans memorize when to use the topic marker. It is 
solely a feeling. It's solely a nuance when Koreans use it. This function in English does the same thing that the topic marker does for the most part. Brings up a new topic. Hey, so uh, are you going to see the Super Bowl? The Super Bowl? <laughs> Try not to laugh because I'm like exaggerating. We don't do it this, this hard. Um, so I bought a pizza. So I went to Korea. So the Super Bowl, did you watch it? So notice what we, we do this intonation when we're introducing something and we want like confirmation, like, hey, okay, I'm going to talk about this now, right? We do this. And that feeling is similar to what you can get with the topic marker. Subject marker is not. Subject marker does not have this sort of intonation that brings up a topic. So if you're making a sentence and you don't know, should I use the, for example, let's, let's see one of our sentences we already had. Um... Okay, if we switch the teacher, 선생님께서, 선생님께서는 일찍 나가셨어요. The boss left early. The boss, the boss, he left early. Would you say the boss left early or would you say the boss, le well, he left early? If someone asked you a question of did the boss leave early, which one would you use? Uh, just think about it realistically. If someone says, hey, where's the boss? Well, the boss, he left early. Or would you say the boss left early? Which one of those sentences would you use? It's probably, you're probably all going to say the same answer, but I'm wondering, which would you prefer to say the topic marker or the subject marker? I'm just curious if this is making sense. This is not like an official uh, linguistic thing. This is just something that I noticed. We do a lot of the same thing. <clears throat> You'd use the subject for that. Okay. Anyone, anyone say differently. They might use the, uh, the topic marker. I'll let you know both of them are correct, but the nuance is different. <clears throat> Traga thinks subject. Claire as well says subject. Okay. That, I, for a record, that's what I would use. But can you tell me why? It's hard to tell you. It's hard to explain why back to me or back to someone because it's a feeling, right? It's like, well, I mean, it does sound right. Or in this situation, this sounds better. That's, it's really just a feeling because when we do this in English, which we don't always do, but this sort of feeling has that you're bringing something up, a new topic, right? And it also sets it apart from other things. So if you say, well, the boss, he left early. It's like, well, I'm here or and the other employees are here and the boss, well, as for the boss, well, he left early, but other people didn't. So it could be okay to use all, oh, yeah, the, the, well, the boss, he left early. But it implies like, okay, now we're talking about the boss and maybe we'll talk about like the other people didn't leave or something. You know, we're, we're kind of setting it up, right? It points it out and says, this is significant. Look at this. They don't do this intonation in Korean though. You would never say, uh, 사장님께서, like, 사장님은. like you don't do any of that intonation in Korean, but we love making our intonation uh, unique in, in English. In fact, I made a video about Korean intonation when they do it and how it works and then uh, tips for better intonation. I have that video. It's not going to be up though for a few more months, but I filmed it back in like, November or something like that. I can't even remember when I filmed it, but yeah, I do have a video all about it. But uh, this sort of intonation is what we do for the topic marker. So if a sentence sounds fine to add this sort of intonation on that word, you bet it's going to sound better with the topic marker. So let me ask you a question. If you say, um, if someone asks you, do you like pizza? Would you say, pizza tastes good. You say, pizza, pizza, basi soil. But you, would you say that with the topic marker or the subject marker? I'm not even going to ask you which is in English. I'm just saying, if someone says, do you like pizza? And you want to say, ah, 네, pizza something, pizza 좋아해요. And you're going to use the topic, topic marker or the subject marker. Obviously, you could use the, the object marker, but here we're going to use the topic or the uh, subject. So you can say, pizza는 맛있어요 or pizza가 맛있어요. So you're saying pizza is good. Which would you use? Would you say pizza is good? Probably not if someone asked you a question. You probably wouldn't want wouldn't want to say pizza is good because it sounds like well, like what else are we talking about? It makes sense, but the Korean will feel like eh, 
you should say pizza here, right? Yeah, depends on the pineapple. Okay. So how would you say, I don't like pineapple? So someone said, I love, so, okay, you're talking with your friend, you say, I love pizza. 저는 피자, 저는 모든 피자가 맛있어요. So for me, I like all pizza. 저는 모든 종류의 피자가 맛있어요. I like every kind of pizza. Pineapple, pineapple, not so much. What if you wanted to say pineapple, I don't like? This isn't by rules. Like, you don't need to think about this as like setting the topic or sub. Do you want that intonation or not? Yes or no? Yeah. In that case, you probably would want the topic marker. A pineapple and kuredo jom. Like that. Jom anida. Pineapple and, right? But what if you didn't want that? What if you wanted to say pineapple's not good, but I love pepperoni? How would you do that? Which which one would you use topic marker for pepperoni or pineapple or subject marker? I think you might instantly know which one to use without even thinking about it. You'd say, "A pineapple은 좀 그런 좀 그런데 어 페페로니는 맛있어요." Right? I like pepperoni. You you could say pepperoni가 맛있어요, but that's like I like pepperoni. I like pepperoni. Like it's okay, but it's not what you're trying to say. You want that intonation to set it apart to draw interest to it. That's what the topic marker does. It draws interest to what you're saying, to the word that it comes after. And because it does that, it has all the functions that you've learned, like setting the topic for something. Like you walk into a random room and uh, they say, introduce yourself. Well, 저는 빌리라고 합니다. There's no intonation in Korean, but for that. 저는 빌리라고 하고요. My name is Billy. My name is Billy. You wouldn't say, my name is Billy. You wouldn't say, my name is Billy. You'd say, my, well, for me, my name is Billy. Like that, 저는. You could say, 제가 빌리라고 해요. My name's Billy. And it has a different intonation. It's just like, it doesn't add any sort of uh, nuance. It doesn't add, doesn't point out me. I'm I'm Billy, like that. So it, it has this feeling when you use the topic marker. And at the beginning of a sentence, it could be one or the other. And both of them are okay. A lot of situations, you're not going to be wrong using one or the other, right? Because you could say, well, I like it. And you could say, I like it. Oh, I should have clarified, but you should know this already. But the subject marker adds a little bit of emphasis to the verb. A little like what? Like I am, I did. Whereas this one doesn't. So that's the other difference. But this would be, that would have been in a lesson about topic marker, subject marker. But anyway, yeah, topic marker adds that sort of feeling. So that's the secret to the topic marker. Is this just that feeling? You're talking and you want to say, oh yeah, uh, I did this and this and this, but this, and then talk about that. Or this, however, this one, and now you bring that, that's the topic now. That's how you do it. It's just a feeling. So because it's just a feeling, sometimes you're going to feel this one's better. And other times you're going to feel this one's better. And that's why Koreans themselves can't explain it because it's just a feeling. And it won't always translate at this. I don't want you to think like this is the the key that this always did. but it does have it you can swap it with this feeling and if it makes sense in english that's what you should use but i'm just saying we don't always make this exaggerated intonation in english we might just say well i mean i like pineapple right pineapple it's it's not always this big it might just be might just be like that like very light ah, pineapple and pineapple's okay right we don't do pineapple we don't always exaggerate it but it's the same sort of general thing it, it draws attention um, yeah. And it works as well as why you would use one or one or the other when you're asking questions. So actually I can go a little bit further with, so if you're asking a question, um, let's, let's think about a good question. Hmm. Who did it? So if I asked you who did it, and you want to say I did it, which would you use? Oh, my my tablet just shut off. It's okay. We don't need it anyway. <laughs> Let me charge it while you're thinking about that. So who did it? You want to say I did it. Would you say 저는 했어요 or 제가 했어요? And why? I'll let you know both can be used, but why would which one would you use and why? Who did it? Who ate my last piece of pizza? 저는 했어요. 제가 했어요. Which would you say? And why? 
I have to look over here. Okay, a lot of you are saying subjects. Tega, Tega, Hesoya. Okay, you're right, but why? If you said topic, you're not wrong, but it has a different nuance. And it probably would not be the nuance you want. Tega, Hesoya. Cholonen, Hesoya. Right? So, typically, you actually can learn this separately. When you're answering questions, it's always going to be the subject marker. But that's not because there's some magical rule. That's just because you don't ever want that nuance. If someone says, who ate my last piece of pizza? Oh, well, I ate it. Like, why would you say that, right? I ate it. Well, that's for me. I ate it. Like, okay. Um, no, you would say, I ate it. I ate it. But you don't have that I. You don't have that emphasis. It's just, I ate it. I, I. Actually, the intonation for this is just straight down. There's nothing. There's no going up and going down. It's just straight down. I, I ate it, right, in English. That's the subject marker. Anytime you don't want that, uh, it's subject. I ate it. I ate it. <laughs> well, as for me, I ate it. Well, it's like, are you, what are you contrasting that with? It just doesn't really make sense. It, you could say, oh, um, I ate it. Like, are you going to say something else about yourself now? There could be situations where you might want to say that. Uh, well, as for me, well, I ate it, but then you're okay. Then you could use the topic marker again. Uh, and I'm going to keep talking about myself. Then it's okay because you have that, you brought attention to yourself and now you're going to talk about it. Otherwise, subject marker is the only one that sounds natural. And now you can feel that. You're like, oh yeah, of course. I, wouldn't, I would never want to use the topic marker in that sort of sentence. Uh, it's the same thing for making a quote. 저는 철수 uh, 했다고 했어요. So I said, actually, I'll add 말, 말했어요 so you can actually see it. I sorry, it's really messy. I'm going fast. 저는 철수 something 했다고 말했어요. So I said 저는 말했어요. I said that 철수 did it. Would you say I said that topic marker 철수는 했다고 했어요. 저는 철수가 했다고 했어요. Which one would you use? Again, this is another rule you can memorize. Whenever it's inside of a quoting form, you always use this marker. But it's obvious. I said that... Would you say, I said that 철수... I said that he did it. You, you may... Maybe, if you're contrasting it with something, but it's gonna be 철수가. I said that 철수... 철수... did it. You don't want 철수, right? But 저는, I said that 철수 did it. You could, you could though do 제가 철수가 했다고 말했어요. You could also do 제가 again. And now it's not I said, but it's I said that 철수 did it, right? Does that make sense? Does that help? So now if you have 제가, 제가 말했어요. 제가 철수가 했다고 말했어요. Now it's I said that 철수 did it. But it's not, I said that Charsu did it. It's just, I said that Charsu did it. You don't have that emphasis. So they're both correct. Which one would you use? Well, if there's no, if you just want, randomly walk into a room and you're like, I said that Charsu did it, they're gonna be like, what did I ask you? You might wanna use, uh, as for me, well, I said that Charsu did it. And then they're gonna be like, okay, you're talking, you're talking about yourself. All right, I kind of get it. I don't know why you randomly walked in the room and said that, but it makes sense. So you're going to want to use one or the other depending on what situation you're in. Hopefully hopefully that helps. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and I'm ex I'm sharing this with you right now because I know it's it's hard to explain this sort of thing in a book. And it might not work for other languages because I don't know what other languages use that sort of intonation. Where in English like I said we'll go we'll go up and down. To, to add emphasis to something, and we'll simply go down like I. I said if we don't want that. So the subject marker, you can kind of think of it as like standard going down intonation a little bit, and then the topic marker is up and then down and back up a little bit. Or at least you sometimes might just hear like pineapple, like pineapple, like a little bit. It's not always going to be like a full jump, but it is that up and down intonation that we get in English. So that's, that's really all it is. And if you can feel that, and you use it a lot, you'll feel that sort of uh, difference. And you'll know, oh, I want to use the topic marker here because obviously it would feel weird to use a subject marker. And that's all that Koreans are doing is it feels right.
Oh, hey, Traga! Hey, thanks a lot, Traga. <clears throat> so, Traga는 방금 donated 하셨어요. So, Traga just donated. When they say donate, donate 하다. Donate 하다. That means donate. Traga는 방금 just now. Donator 하셨어요. 하셨어요. And I'm saying, yeah, Traga just donated now. I could say Traga just donated now. I'm not saying that. Traga just donated now. I'm saying Traga just donated now. So I'd use Traga nun. Since it's less awkward to randomly bring up, just to say something without any sort of context behind it, that's when you're going to use the topic marker. But it's because of that nuance. It sounds more natural to rant to just say that. If someone said who donated, well, then I wouldn't say Traga just donated. Doesn't make it, it sounds really weird. I wouldn't say Traga then. I would say Traga ga donator hashosoyo. Because obviously you don't want that intonation. So yeah, uh, six dabs for you, Traga. Get some music. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I can take a few more questions. I wish I had my tablet, but it died. It only lasts. Uh, two hours now, and then the battery dies. But I can still see your comments on my computer over here. M says, thank you so much. This really helps a lot. You're welcome. Yeah, hopefully that clarifies it. Although, even if you listen to this, even if it makes perfect sense, you will still need practice because just knowing that it's that feeling, you still will take a lot of practice to internalize that feeling. And now for me, if I wasn't a Korean teacher and I was just speaking Korean, I would not be able to explain that as, an, as a Korean speaker because it's just a feeling like, oh, it's, it's just a feeling. It just feels right. And ask any Korean, why did you use the topic marker instead of the subject marker? They're going to say, oh, it just feels right. But now you know what's going on in their head. Um, Xandria says, what would you do if you met a guy named Charsu in real life? And he whispered, I've been watching you a long time. I would say, oh, thanks. I'm a big fan. Tonen <laughs> penieyo. <laughs> I well I me I'm a fan. Tolan Penieyo. And then I'd run. <laughs> and I wouldn't look back. Get on the clo get in the nearest taxi. Be like just go. Kenyang kenyang kaseyo. Ju kaseyo. Bye. Olen jum kaseyo. Hurry quickly. Say bye. Uh Aniki says can you explain how to use kwayan? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I have a, I have a cold today, so I sometimes I'm coughing, but I'm mostly okay. Kwayan is most often used with the gayo ending, meaning should or could, like could it be, would it be, that sort of thing. And it's used to mean like really, as in, I doubt. Like do you really, like really, really, like that intonation, Kwayan. 과연 그럴까? 과연 갈까요? 과연 있을까요? Like, do you think they really would be? Do you think they'd really? It's that really when you're doubting, you know, again, with intonation. Really? We do that. <laughs> but it means really. So if someone says, hmm, 과연, it's like saying, hmm, really? I wonder, hmm, I wonder. It has that doubtful uh, sort of meaning, like actually, could it be? 과연. What do we know? Who knows? That sort of feeling. And yeah, most often used with this form, doesn't have to be, but if it's used in a full sentence, it will be with this, could it be form. That's it. It's not really, any, it's not really a special thing, but you'll see it used uh, pretty often like that. Um, Traga also asks, how would you say a dog who is two months old? Uh, you would say, Igewor. Yeah, Igewor. They use, um, like why tech, while technically you could use Hans Hire, Tus Hire, like that for a year. Um, for under a year, it's common just to use K word, which is counting months, and then a Sino Korean number. So, like, Il Gewor, I Gewor, Sam Gewor. Like, you can, or you just say Agi Eo, it's a baby. Agi Eo, technically Agi, but Agi is the uh, commonly spoken version of it, of Agi. You also hear Agi, I'm just gonna write that down which means a child, baby. Egiyeo, like that. Okay. All right, let's see a few other questions we got. I saw a couple other come in. 
What things did you study after reaching intermediate level? What did you focus on more? I focused on conversation the most in my intermediate level. It was just a ton of speaking practice and listening practice. And that's what you need to get beyond the intermediate level is just way more exposure and practice than you think you need. Like listening to everyone, like every kind of speech, <laughs> talking to everyone about everything, doing everything. It's just, you need so much of that. So that's what I focused on a lot. Nowadays though, since that's fine for me, general conversation, it, I can just listen to it with like one ear and do something else. But uh, nowadays, like I, I focus on doing business Korean uh, and then some extra idiomatic expressions I do. Uh, occasionally Chinese characters, stuff like that. But I still have a ton of stuff that I want to learn. It's just different. It's not the stuff that I teach on this channel. It's more like specific stuff, I guess. Uh, Sebastian asks Tab Huni. I have actually a full uh, live stream all about that. That's Taga uh, Ponika or Ta Poni, same thing. And that is when you realize something while doing something. So like while I was doing something, I realized that's it. Hada ponika. Hangu da ponika. Like while living in Korea, I realized like whatever you want to say. And there are several forms. There's taboni, ko poni, uh hey poni. And I have live streams about all three of those. <coughs> Logo says your first three books go to intermediate. Yeah, the they would go to, I mean, realistically, I I call that sort of Korean all intermediate, low intermediate or high beginner level. Because I think the Korean you need to make conversations in most like everyday conversations, there's a lot. And I clump all of that together into beginner in my in in like how I classify things. Intermediate is how you can say nicer versions of those basic things like you know i want to eat this i do not want to go there like these are all beginner stuff and intermediate would be well i much would prefer to have been there at the same time as him like that sort of thing is intermediate and then advanced would be less commonly used versions of that stuff so like i once had thought about uh what like you know it would just be beyond that something more uh, eloquent would be advanced stuff so yeah my books would definitely go up to high beginner it does include majority of that beginner stuff uh and but depending on the resource you're using they might classify some of that stuff as advanced i wouldn't but it just depends like there is no official beginner intermediate advanced level it's just whatever the teacher wants to call it so um yeah but i would personally say low intermediate high beginner is where, where it takes you hopegate said when's the right time to switch from using a korean english dictionary to a korean korean dictionary and eh, never i use both but I often will find myself switching to the Korean Korean because if it's a word that doesn't make sense in English, like the, the English dictionary will only get you so far because there are so many words that have the exact same translation in English. But when you look at the Korean definition, it's totally different. I would say if you're able to use neighbor to define the words that it gives you in a definition and understand the definition, you're ready for it. But I wouldn't go full Korean Korean ever because you're just looking up a word. You don't need to force yourself to use it to learn it in Korean. You can learn it in English, but if you can't get it, then look at it in Korean. But feel free to add it in anytime. And then uh, Aniki asks, Madang. Uh, I don't have a lesson about that, do I? <coughs> No, I don't, I don't have a lesson about that. Um, that would be, I put that in advanced because it's not that common, but pretty much you're, it's similar as uh, like kaunde, like among or under the conditions of, um, because madang is like a field of something, like a yard. I've never used it, but if you want, we could do a live stream about it, I guess. Uh, although I'm not a big fan of the advanced, the really advanced live streams because very few people make it to them versus the beginner and the intermediate ones where I get a lot more people. Like right now, the, the Super Bowl is going on and I still have a hundred of you learning Korean, which is awesome. But if this were an advanced lesson, we'd be down to like 30 right now. So uh, I will do them though for member requests. So if you're if there's a topic you really want to learn that you've seen and you actually want to know about, definitely request it, I'll add it. I've I already have a few other requests ready to go for the next uh, vote for the next live stream topics as well. 
Sup says, I'm an extreme beginner. Why is Espa pronounced as Espa instead of Yesupa? Oh, because S. This vowel, uh, uh, S, 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 Pa. I know I wrote that kind of messy, but S, S, Pa, S, S, S. If you think it was Su, then you have been using romanization for too long. And I don't mean that as an insult. I mean that as like a fact. Uh, you need to move away from romanization because romanization will hurt your Korean. Um, if there's any resource with romanization, it doesn't mean it's bad. Just means cover up the romanization. You can look at it if you really can't figure it out on your, on your own, but don't read Korean with romanization. It'll, it'll mess everything up. Yeah, you can look at it just like, oh, I can't remember. What's that letter? Oh, that's right. It's this letter. But don't use it for reading the words. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's just espa. And then if you read it really fast, it's espa, espa. But it would still be espa, espa. Nat Natalie says, Super Bowl, who are you rooting for? Isn't uh, Taylor Swift a quarterback or something? I keep hearing a, a lot about that. I guess she's playing in the Super Bowl. I have no idea who's playing. I'm sorry. Um, I'm not a fan of American football. I don't have anything against it. I like the commercials. So maybe I'll watch some of the commercials after it's done. I'm sure I'll Google who won, but I don't know who should win. So I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, Taylor Swift's going to win. That's okay. I'll, I'll bet on that. Yeah. I'm sure she'll throw the ball and get a, get a, uh, what do you call it? Three pointer. Yeah, something like that will happen. She'll score she'll score a three point goal at the buzzer. Why does North Korean and South Korean sound different besides despite both being Korean? Because they are far away. And uh even in within South Korea, areas that are farther apart, the older generation will typically have more of a different type of way that they speak. But nowadays with media being as popular as, as it is, everyone speaks mo for the most part. People will adjust their speech to be the same as everyone else in Seoul. So Seolmar is the typical uh, type of Korean spoken in Seoul and around the area. That's the default for everyone in all of Korea. So unless you're in the older generation, most people today now just speak pretty much standardized as, as Seolmar with maybe a little bit of dialect words thrown in, but it's still the regular standard Korean. North Korea, I don't imagine that people there have a TV set outside of Pyongyang, outside of their, um, uh, outside of the main, the main city. I don't assume many people have access to a television, at least not officially. So they're not gonna be exposed to one standardized Korean from that area. They're all gonna speak however they want. And even in North Korea, there are many different dialects. So. You might consider North Korean as a type of Korean, but there is there are many different dialects of North Korean, and they're all quite different. They'll have different words for things and different grammar and different pronunciation. And yeah, so just, you know, there are lots of different types of Korean. Even outside of Korea completely, there are other types of Korean. I've never done videos about them, but there are there are videos for, there are dialects of Korean, or actually the completely different languages, uh, spoken by Korean, what would be the word? They're their ethnicity is Korean, but they were out bored outside of Korea. I think it's in, it's in a, oh, where's that? Is it Mongolia? Anyway, I can't, I can't remember exactly. I think it's Koryo, Koryo in. Yeah. Uh, there are some other types of Korean as well. They don't even sound like Korean, but if you listen to them and don't pay attention to what they're saying, it sounds like Korean until you open your ears and you're like, what are they saying? I have no clue. So there are other types of Korean as well uh, in other countries. That's just one of them. North Korean doesn't allow foreign words. Um, not quite. They do. They officially don't. They, they pretend they don't, but they do have a lot of foreign words. But instead of English, they will use Russian because, you know, they're friends. Uh, they'll use Russian words also because they're closer to Russia. That's probably the real reason. Uh, they don't like the Eng they don't like English words, but they will use lots of Russian words in their language. So they'll use the Russian version of a foreign word instead of the English version of that same foreign word. Their word for ice cream, although I taught in the video, they they might use orumguaza, 
But in reality, that was that was actually incorrect. That's not commonly used. Now they use uh, Esekimo, I believe, which is like an ice cream bar in Russia called Eskimo. That's what they use for the regular word for ice cream. So they do use foreign words, just not English words. Kyopo. Kyopo. And then, yeah, people who live abroad in other countries who uh, immigrated to other countries, they also will speak differently. So people from who like moved to Los Angeles, for example, in the 70s and 80s, when lots of Koreans moved over and uh, when Koreatown, you know, was getting really big in LA and Los Angeles, that is a, a slightly different style of speaking than you'll get in Seoul. Uh, not just because of their ages being different, but because they grew up in a different environment. So you get different words that they'll use. They'll mix in a lot of English words into their Korean. It, there's just, they're just different types of Korean all over. So, yeah. I teach standard, which is what everyone teaches. There's no one I know of that teaches a different dialect specifically. Um, but that's the one you would learn. It's just standard. And then from there, you can go to anyone you want. Because since they're all just Korean anyway, you just take standard Korean, learn a few extra rules and grammar forms, and then you now you can branch off into Busan dialect and now you're good. But just going straight into that dialect, I think would be quite difficult because most people in that area won't even speak like that. You'll have to learn standard and then you can adjust to depending on where you are and who you're talking with. Flo Purdy says, my daughter in Seoul has worked with a group at times that teach North Korean refugees to understand how it is spoken in South Korea. That's awesome. I know there's there uh, there's a group like that I've, I've heard of. I'm not sure if it's the same group that I know. But yeah, there are some uh, people who help North Koreans get acclimated to South Korea. And one of the biggest things is helping them learn like technologic technology related words. Like they wouldn't know words that you would use, you know, every day about like internet stuff or, um, you know, business related terms, all those things they just wouldn't need those in North Korea because you know you don't have all that cool stuff over there so yeah they have although they can communicate without any issues they lack a lot of the extra vocabulary that they need that they would use online so yeah it's probably it's I think it would be quite difficult to do that like one it's cool it's cool now you're in, North, in South Korea you get a better life but at the same time you're like I literally have no connection with anyone. I don't understand what they're saying. Uh, it's frustrating. I can't say what I want to say. And then no one will treat you differently because they won't know you're actually from there unless you tell them. And because you don't want to sound like you're from there, you're going to immediately start speaking like you're not. So yeah, it, it's kind of a, I think it would be a difficult experience to adapt. That's my opinion. Logo says, thanks for your time. Your books and are excellent. Yeah, thanks everyone for coming. Feel free. If you have any other questions, I'll stick around for just a couple more minutes and then I really should go. It's already been, this stream has gone on two and a half hours, <laughs> way longer than I expected for today. Um, but I'm just having fun talking. You can, you don't have to stick around for this whole stuff. It's just answering questions. Lesson's already over. As Ferris Bueller said, it's over everyone. It's over. What, what are you doing? Go home. I think it's what he said at the end of the movie. I wonder if the the HANA program teaches ESL or if there's another program that teaches refugees ESL. Um, I don't know. Okay, any other any other last minute questions? Oh, I do see one question from before I missed. Thomas says, what are the situations you would use present progressive instead of normal? present tense you're talking about like uh hago isoyo ko ita like like this sort of form versus just saying like hey -o. well the standard present tense can mean i do i am doing and i will do it already can mean all of those three things and it is used what are you studying what are you what are you going to study? 무슨 공부해요? What are you going to study tonight? Oh, 무슨 공부해요? What are you studying? I mean, any of those. The 고이다 is when you need to spe you need to specify. No, 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 not future. Not, um. What do I say? Not doing something in general. Not that I study in general, but right now, at this moment, currently, I am in the middle of. I am doing something. So it's for emphasis for something that's going on right now. So if you want to say, no, no, I am, what I am doing right now is this, not in general. Don't think I'm talking about in general. Don't think I'm talking about the future, but right now, 
So if you kind of add the word right now in your head, it'll it's used all the time though. But if you add that in your head and it sounds okay, then yeah, use that. And it also is commonly used with the word tigum, like right now. Natalie says your background. I actually don't even know where this is. <laughs> <coughs> Um, it's a bridge. I know it's in Korea. I don't know though. Let's see. Revindu says, trying to start self-study Korean. So shall I start from your videos? If you want, if they work for you, you can start with the beginner course. I have a, um, I'll post it in the chat. I have a beginner course, completely free. There's nothing you can even buy. It's a hundred episodes. I think it's great, although I made it, so I'm a bit biased. It gets you it gets you up to speed with all of the basic basics. So once you watch that, you're gonna be good with the basic stuff. You'll still have to learn a lot beyond then, but you'll have like, you know, all the basics down from that course. And then again, that's free. And then if you wanna learn more about politeness levels, I have a full course about it. It goes into excruciating detail. And yeah, it talks about everything related to politeness levels. So all the feelings associated with every, like the, all the nuances for all the politeness levels, how all of them can mix, you know, oh, what if a, I'm a, one of my friends used honorifics to me the other day? What was that? Like all that stuff is in there. Um, but yeah, again, it all comes down to just a feeling. How does, what's the nuance you want to convey? So if a friend's using honorific speech to you and the nuance again, as we learned is, I respect, I look up to this person and your friend uses it to you. What does that mean? Do they actually really look up to you? Well, probably they're being sarcastic. Oh, great, Billy. You are so smart. Oh, 정말 똑똑하세요. 좀 똑똑하십니다. Like that, obviously it's, you know, sarcasm. And they do that in Korea too. So yeah, it, but it does go over all those situations and how to use all the different nouns. And oh, what about nim? You know, we didn't talk about nim today. That's another thing that's commonly used uh, in, in honorific speech, but it's also used in just regular polite speech too, or uh, as well as other types of words that are not honorific, but they're commonly used with honorific. And yeah, all that stuff is covered in the course. Again, a free course. I can't announce this yet. I do... Since for those of you who are who are still here, I will tell you, I have another course coming up, not yet, but sometime before the summer. Yeah, I'll say that sometime before the summer, I have another course coming up, another free course that you should look forward to. That's very special. I've been working on. I've been working on it off and on though since I finished the last course. So for the past year or so, but uh, really working on it hard ever since publishing my uh, Korean Made Simple 2, which was four weeks ago. So yeah, it's going good. I'm about a third of the way done right now already. So it should be out sometime before the summer. And yeah. Haute form is cool. Yeah. I mentioned Haute in the course at the last, I think it's like the last episode or second to last episode. You don't need it though. But it does, I did briefly mention how that works. The reason is some of the old, like Korea technically has seven politeness levels. If you count, yeah, I guess if you count all of them, yeah, sure. But uh, two of them are like rarely used. One of them you'll you'll never see except in like Korean dramas. But uh, you don't really need to learn all seven because you don't need to use them. They're archaic. Like older people might sometimes use parts of them. So it's not bad if you know it, but you don't really need to understand how they're different so much because you're not going to be the one in that position to use it yourself. As long as you understand it, you're fine. The curse course? What's the curse course? Is there a curse? Is there something else? Yeah, I can't announce it yet. If you're my member, you'll find out soon enough. One of uh, my members get to learn about stuff early. I'll make an announcement when it's... Um, getting a little bit closer. So my members in the, in the Discord channel, hashtag members, will get to know what's going on in advance. But I'm really looking forward to it. It's my fa It's definitely gonna be my favorite uh, of, my, of my courses coming up. You'll see. Actually, members might probably already know what it is, or you can guess, but I'm not gonna tell you if you guess. Okay, that's enough for today. Thank you everyone for coming out, and I will see you again next time. Good luck in your studies. 
And uh, yeah, feel free to message me. You can come on my Discord channel, completely free, open 24-7, and I will see you next time. Krum, tamitoba!